good googly moogly, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by untuckit.com. This is a new sponsor, and it's a new sponsor that's come up with a novel idea. Everybody likes wearing those button-up shirts. Like I, I, w- I was wearing a flannel shirt earlier today. Everybody likes wearing them, but if you don't tuck them in, they look kind of odd. Right? There's like this little blanket that goes over your dick and your butt. It's like a backwards hill. Yeah. Like the idea is that you're moving around a lot. So when you tuck it, it keeps it from untucked. But who the fuck tucks their shirt in? Especially if you don't have a job where you have to tuck your shirt in. Like if you're a banker, you can't be wandering around with your shirt untucked. I'm not going to trust you with my cash. I can't even remember the last time I tucked my shirt in. I hate it that much. Well, you're, you know, you have an unconventional job. If you're a dude with a conventional job, like if you, uh, you know. I thought you were going to say lawyer. body. But and I was like, no, that's why I don't like to cut, tuck it in. I don't want to look like a fucking grapefruit. It's not <laughs> comfortable, though, yeah. being tucked in. Yeah. You got, you got, you know, there's no, not much space that's in That's the there. thing that guys with gut, guts do when they have their pants tucked into <laughs> and the gut is like firm and tight <laughs> against their pants. It's almost like a, a bra for their gut <laughs> yeah. when it's tucked in. Hold right? it in. Yeah. Right. A in little a way. resistance. I hide there. that yeah. shit. Right. Um, yeah, it's not comfortable. I'm, I'm much more comfortable with, with shirts untucked. But then there was a, always that extra cloth. Well, this company, Untuck It, decided to figure that out. <laughs> They it's made exclusively for men who wear their shirts untucked. See now, women won't be so excited to wear your clothes either. That's another good thing because hmm. one of the reasons why women like it is because it covers their JJ and, and their butt, right. and they can walk around with but their legs. Sh- hanging. Yeah, their legs hang out more skin. This will definitely show more skin, but you know, it's it's going to show your whole vagina. Let's be honest. Look look where this guy's penis is. That's yeah. crazy. It's right there. Wow. So to be less likely that chicks will uh, wear your clothes, or if they do wear your clothes, they'll have to wear underwear. I feel something. like if I saw this guy in the street, <laughs> I wouldn't even notice that there was anything different going on. Right. You know, it just blends right in. Yeah, the, the, the brand ambassador is this guy, Brad Richards, who's a hockey star, and he, uh, he decided to uh, be a part of the company as well. It's because it's, it's a novel and great idea. Mm-hmm. Untuck It has solved the problem, ladies and gentlemen, made exclusively, as I said, for men who wear their shirts untucked. And women too. You can wear it, especially if you're, you know, tend to be like more of a manly sort of a woman. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, <laughs> fucking wear flannel. Who gives a shit, man? Wear whatever you want. If you're hot, by the way, you could pull off flannel. Nobody gives a shit. Uh, so anyway, use the code Rogan R O G A N for a special ten percent discount at untuckit.com. That's U N T U C K I T dot com. Shirts designed to be worn untucked. Use the code word Rogan and save 10%. Shipping is free both ways. Both ways, I guess, like if you want to send it back. Uh, the right shirt can make all the difference, fuckers. So uh, go check it out, untuckit.com. We're also brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace, the very best way for you to create your own professional-looking website. Nothing but rave reviews, by the way, of Squarespace, uh, of all our sponsors. It's one of the most popular, and it's just it just works great. And it's something that's it's such a... But just a godsend. It used to be it was so difficult to get a website. You used to have to hire someone, and that person was probably busy as shit, and it takes massive man hours. The man hours have been significantly reduced, and you can make an awesome professional website, including with an online store. Super easy to do. You can sell digital downloads like stand-up comedy or music or anything along those lines. Um, beautiful designs, drag and drop content, super easy to use, about as easy as attaching a photograph to an email. If you can do that, you can figure out how to do this. My uh, site, my site's built on Squarespace. Kapow! That is Unbox if you Therapy. Want, if you want to bring it up, com. I've got a store on there as well. UnboxTherapy.com, yeah. built on Squarespace. Can you believe that, ladies and go. gentlemen? What are the odds? We didn't plan this out. What more do you need to know? What more do you need to know? Plans start at 8 bucks a month, including a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Responsive design. Your site will look awesome on any device. And commerce, on, uh, online store. Every site comes with an online store. Squarespace has a logo creator as well where you can create a clean, simple logo designed for yourself in minutes. Many, many of our friends use Squarespace. Uh, um, Duncan Trussell uses it. Tom Segura and Christina Pazitsky, don't they use it? I don't know. I know I built Christ the Church, new Christ Shops Dev Squad store on that recently. Yeah, Brian uses it. Uh, Cara Santa Maria uses it. Uh, so many people use it. And there's Unbox. Look at that. You got see. So you can plug in on the front page there. You can plug in um, your Instagram feed. So that's always fresh content. So 
uh, if you're a person like me and the majority of what you do is on YouTube or on social networks mm -hmm. and you don't want to constantly be updating a website, one way to keep it current is to use this Instagram plugin, which feeds right back to your Instagram feed, obviously. And so gives people a reason to come back and check it out. Maybe they don't use Instagram themselves. They can still see what you're up to. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, go back. Look. <laughs> I, well, I, had the, I had the hemp force on there. See? Powerful That's what I left Lewis. with last time. And now I'm on, you know, I'm hooked up. I'm on the program now. <laughs> and uh, unboxtherapy.com is the website mm -hmm. if you want to go and check out Lewis's uh, awesome website. Great reviews on all sorts of different types of uh, electronics and items and and homemade craft brew beer. How is that craft <laughs> beer thing? Is that good? <laughs> that that was sent to me, but I don't actually have it. So oh, I did you try it? it? You no, I haven't tried it yet. No. That's a great idea, though, yeah. huh? Have a craft brew thing in your house? Definitely. This is this is actually cool here too. This uh is all the different items and stuff that I use that are in my uh, personal inventory of uh, items that help make my videos possible. Ah, oh, nice, yeah. beautiful. That's cool. And it's a plugin. They link back to the Amazon store. Like, like Squarespace makes doing super complicated things incredibly easy to do. Boom. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. So go to squarespace.com uh, and get 10% off and a free trial for your first purchase. Go to squarespace.com, enter the code word Joe. That's for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace.com, enter in the code word Joe. Squarespace, a better web starts with your website. That's their logo. That's the shit that they say. Everything else is like basically my own words, but a better web starts with your website. That's them. Could be worse. It could be way worse. Yeah. Could be way worse. All right, we're also brought to you by Onnit.com. That's O-N-N-I-T. We dosed up Lewis the last time That's he right. was here, and he That's had right. a dream that he was hanging out with Brian Singer. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Plus, the protein stuff kept me full. You know what I mean? Like, I was uh, about to start editing a video. I took a big protein shake, and I'm not you know, super healthy or anything like that, but I stayed full for a long time. I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to snack. I'm telling you, I'm going to take this shit seriously. I like the pro I've had people recently complain about the hemp forest. They don't like the way it tastes, which is, I don't know, I guess it's subjective. I, to, oh, just to, really? for the record, I always mix mine with coconut water. I, I use, love chocolate, though. Chocolate's good, yeah. yeah. Well, it's also made with stevia, so it has very little sugar. There's right. like one gram of naturally occurring sugar per serving. I, if you're interested in hemp, and especially like people said, like, why is it so expensive? Our hemp is the best hemp you can buy. If you go to you know any store, you can buy hemp protein powder, and you can compare the two of them between this and Hemp Force. And there's two two differences. One, the percentage of protein per serving is much higher on the stuff that we buy. We just buy the, the best stuff that you can get. It's not cheap. We have to buy it from Canada, too, unfortunately. They're starting to change that law. Um, they're fighting against it. They're going all the way to the Supreme Court in, in Kentucky. There was like some recent website uh, that was uh, detailing Kentucky's battle to uh, to grow hemp, hmm. which is non-psychoactive, by the way, completely non It's not getting anybody high. It's just connected to, from the beginning, to marijuana. And the reason being that marijuana became illegal, and this is really wacky stuff, but it was because of hemp, hemp the commodity, hemp being used for paper, hemp being used for cloth, hemp being used for food and for oil. Henry Ford, in fact, made the very first fenders of his very first car out of hemp. Wow. And there's a video online. If you go to that video, you can see Henry Ford banging on the fender with a hammer. Hemp is a crazy plant. I mean, hmm. it is literally like... It comes from another planet. It's so different than anything else. If you pick up a hemp stalk, it's incredibly light, but really hard. Hmm. Like a piece of hemp stalk, like a big thick of a, a, a hemp tree that grew uh, thick and large, it's amazing how strong it is. It's weird. It's wow. like an alien plant. You can eat it. has all the essential fatty acids. The, the protein in it is very, very digestible. Um, like I said, with, with on it, we try to use the best stuff available, but you can buy hemp force or hemp protein rather. That's a, a cheaper variety from many different sources. And you can see the difference. You can see it and it'll be more gritty. Um, it won't digest as easily pro probably, and it probably won't have as much protein per percentage, but it's all good. I mean, look, any hemp protein is one of the best proteins you can get. Um, it's just, it has, you're going to have less issues digesting it than you will whey. Some people have no problem problem with whey mm. other people are more sensitive my to wife has whey, had whey protein prior to this one showing up and we were comparing the nutritional values mm -hmm. and something i noticed on the hemp was the fiber yeah the fiber compared to the whey 
Well, it's plant based. Yeah, it's like yeah. eleven grams or something. Yeah, and you know, I could ha- I could use the help. Everybody could use a little fiber. Yeah, it's just good for your body. Yeah. Period. Um, anyway, we we carry that and a host of other uh, healthy snacks and foods uh, like the Warrior Protein Bar, which is a uh, a bar that's made out of buffalo. Uh, it's made out of buffalo in this ancient. Native American tradition that uses cranberries and pepper with no antibiotics, no added hormones, no nitrates, and uh, totally gluten-free. Although I don't know why you would have gluten. I guess you could maybe put wheat somehow or another in a bar to make it th- whatever. Anyway, um, what these bars are is essentially just a really healthy protein snack that's totally natural. Buffalo meat, 14 grams of protein, and it's based on a recipe that has been in the Lakota Sioux Warriors for century. Really can't call them Lakota Sioux. Um, Lakota is what they call themselves. Sioux is what other, other Indians would call them, other Native Americans would call them. And Sioux means, it means enemy. Hmm. So calling them Lakota Sioux warriors, it's not really the correct verbiage. Wow. It's uh, Lakota people. Anyway, the Lakota people, um, they figured out a way you know, many, 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 many years ago to how to preserve meat without uh, all the modern shit that we use that is probably super bad for you. So no MSG, no lactose, no nitrates, as I said, which is the one thing that people really uh, are very leery about when it comes to um, uh, food supplements, uh, not food supplement, food snacks like uh, beef jerkies and salamis and things like that. Things with nitrates, hot dogs, nitrates, not so good. No antibiotics as well. No added hormones. All just super healthy. And again, 14 grams per servings and only uh, 140 calories. Uh, just one of the many things that we have it on it. Uh, and also, if you use the code word Rogan, you will save 10% off any and all supplements. Anything else before we get cracking? You got anything uh, Next weekend, uh, we're going to be at the Comic Con America, American Comedy Company, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, July 23rd and 24th, bringing Kill Tony, Thunder Pussy, and having a comedy show there with Burt Kreischer. Glorious, so ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Go to DeskSquad.tv for all of that information. And uh, next Saturday night, or next Friday night, I am with uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. We are in San Jose at the Center for the Performing Arts, and all the information for that is at joerogan.net under tour. All right, fuckers. Lewis from Unbox Therapy is here. We're all hopped up on coffee and speed and all kinds of other shit. Let's just do this. Joe Rogan Podcast. Check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day. Joe Rogan Podcast by night. All day. Lewis, a lot of people don't want to think you're on speed when you're on coffee, but you're lying to yourself, ladies and gentlemen. You're on a mild That's form a of point. speed. That's a good point. Drugs are everywhere. You don't like uh, Dr. Carl Hart said. You don't want a drug-free America. That's what he said. That's an unproductive America, me, right there. So you know? I'll go with, with that. Take guy coffee said. away from people. They're not working anymore. It's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Remember when you were young and there was no Starbucks? They didn't exist. Like, right. is there is there a, something like that waiting for us out there? Is there like a new thing that's going to just you know, <laughs> that's a good question. Some substance because coffee was there forever, right? Mar- marijuana before, <laughs> yeah, that's probably yeah, <laughs> it's cafes. Probably it. Isn't that what's happening in Colorado? Oh yeah, it's happening like crazy, right? Colorado's going off. Washington State's going off now too because now they just started selling it. So mm-hmm. now the same ripple effect, the same effect that's happening in Colorado, which is they're making way more money than they even planned. They, right. they had like an idea of how much money they would make, and they're making way more, way more now. Uh, I mean, well, that's something that's been tied up yeah. for, for too long, and so I think it makes a lot of sense. Fascinating. Yeah. What a strange world we live in. <laughs> you know? I mean, now they have, uh, have you seen the uh, pot coin? It is no. a uh, digital currency based oh, on marijuana. Oh, my God. <sighs> Inevitable. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to buy marijuana <laughs> with this digital currency? I think you need your own currency next. Nope. That's, that's, when, <laughs> that's when the government comes after you. You got to stay low, dude. JRE coin. You got to stay free that's and true. unambitious. That's true. I agree. <laughs> no running for office. No no trying to affect <laughs> policy. Nothing crazy. But maybe coins can become that. Seriously, like where uh, communities online could have a coin almost as a reward system for the best participants within that community. Well, I think ultimately... We will have digital currency across the board for a variety of different things. And it, it, it could be really easy for communities, whether it's online communities or in towns, to set up their own money. Because I remember there was a town in, man, I want to say like North Carolina, but there was a town that was in the news a while back where um, 
they had decided to make their own digital, not digital currency, but local currency. Mm. And it was being talked about in the news and it was like everybody sort of agreed to what things would be worth and they would all have their own, you know, way of trading goods and selling mm. things and passing it back and forth through each other. That's I think cool. that, yeah, that like as an online thing, that could be everywhere. Yeah, it is the, the decentralization of mm -hmm. the power, you know, it, why should some person in Missouri be concerned with what guys on Wall Street are doing, you know? Yeah, like what, why, well, how, why is that affecting you? Why are you allowing it to affect you? I guess. Does that, it have to be all international like this? <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's smarter people than me that That's probably, the probably have a, something to say about that. But it, the, when the bailout happened, right, that was the conversation. It was, you know, dudes in suits taking money away from dudes in plaid shirts. Do you know who Michael Shermer is? No. He's uh, a was famous he skeptic. Was he on the podcast? No. no oh, okay. he hasn't been on the podcast. Okay. He's a famous skeptic. Okay. Well, he, he wrote this very strange article for Scientific America that's been chewed apart. And uh, uh, it's, it's interesting because it's like his idea of uh, – it's if you like Google Michael Shermer, Scientific America, he apparently writes a, uh, an article there. And he's got this myth of income inequality – is like the title mm -hmm. of the the article. Okay. And uh, look, this is how I know your ideas about finance are dumb, if I think they're dumb. <laughs> this is how I know, because <laughs> I'm clearly dumb. That's the litmus test. So right if there. I read your dumb shit, and I'm like, yo, this is some dumb <laughs> shit, that, that's when you know that your shit is off. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really strange. It's a, a weird analysis of the, um, of the, the situation. And... Uh, the idea that here's here's like one quote almost all of our studies participants the the authors conclude grossly underestimated americans average household incomes and overestimated the level of income inequality hmm. so both income inequality and social mobility though not as ideal as we would like them to be in the land of equal opportunity are not as large and immobile as most of us perceive them he's getting destroyed in the comments yeah whenever i see something like that i always wonder if it's the audience dictating the message or or the message being authentic. Because I always wonder, who are the people reading this magazine? They're probably fairly well off, right? Yeah, scientific, scientific Amer American, American yeah. or whatever. So aren't you? isn't it easier to reinforce what they want to hear than it is to stir, stir something up? I don't know. But when I read this, this is, when I read something that's so goofy like this, this is obviously like a libertarian slant. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that, they 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 lean libertarian and libertarian almost has like a bit of a conservative context to it or a conservative bend to it because it's the, a lot of that things are not as bad as everyone's right. perceiving pull yourself up by your bootstraps mm -hmm. the ability to you know to, to have more freedom will equal more you know less regulation and more mm -hmm. freedom will equal more prosperity it's almost it's an ideology you know yeah. it's, it's an ideology to, as much as being a conservative is as much as being a liberal is like sometimes people they get on that one team and then they just sort of adopt the ideas and the inclinations right. of that team so this seems like what he's doing and this is again coming from a moron this <laughs> seems like very libertarian in its slant and it just whenever someone does something like this i it makes me question like all the things that they think about. Like you're supposed to be a guy who points out logical fallacies, who's involved in critical thinking, mm -hmm. objective reasoning, and you say something like this. This is like, no, there's a there's crazy inequality in this country. Yeah, like, I, I mean, that's, to that's deny what, that that's is what, insane. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Is I think the separation between rich and poor is such an obvious thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, how can you dispute? So, uh, I watched, I can't remember the name of the documentary right now, but it followed a couple of people, Silicon Valley type uh, entrepreneurs, and tracked their incomes relative to those of individuals within the company and the sort of ratio over time, how those how those have changed. But if you look at technology, which is sort of the the angle that I'm looking at it from, the whole intent, more often than not, is to build in efficient, like build efficiencies into your process. So... If you're Amazon, for example, figure out a way to run your warehouse without people. Figure out figure out a way to have robots do to automate all of it, right? Because right. essentially, your bottom line is affected by uh, how much you can auto like like the automakers, for example, get robots in there. You know, their technology appears to push in this direction of eliminating humans from the equation, where it becomes tougher to pinpoint 
where the actual value is being added in, in the product that you're receiving. So it's not like Amazon warehouses don't have humans in them. They do, and they're creating jobs, and they can go around and say, we opened a new warehouse, so we hired uh, 200 people or whatever it might be. But once upon a time, without the automation, how many people would that have been? Yeah, and what is going to happen when they, I mean, are they really testing drones for delivery? That's not bullshit. Uh, that's not bullshit. I mean, it's not, I think it's not nearly as close as the video makes it seem. But just the idea that they're the testing idea, it. The idea. That it's not, yeah. look, it's going to happen. It's like when they first made those photographs where you put the hood on and you stood up there and ka-chunk, you know, oh. they had that thing. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. was it like 1850 yeah, or something, something like, like that? that? Yeah. The, the time between that and having it in your pocket was mm -hmm. inevitable. It's Definitely. Like the, all, all those ideas are out there. Mm -hmm. Someone just has to uncover them. Definitely. So once we have drones that there are testing, that are delivering products, it's a matter of time before the skies are filled with robot delivery trucks that are, that are <laughs> landing places and dropping off TVs. and. Definitely. I think the, the last time we were here, we were talking about self-driving cars. And, and how, it, like, in an airplane, it's okay for that process to be automated, but in cars, we freak out about it. Yeah. It's, I think it's the same thing with drones. People are afraid of what they don't know, afraid of the unknown. But uh, may, maybe drones are a little bit further out, but what's happening right now is also interesting and exciting, and it's kind of flying under the radar in the sense that you're, you have uh, Amazon Prime, you have Amazon Fresh, you have all these ways of getting things that you need without necessarily the same... Uh, the same ecosystem, the same same chain that you once would have had where you had a, a delivery man brings it to a store and then the person in the store puts it on the shelf and then you have to go to the store to buy it and you have to go through a cashier instead of an automated checkout. Just the number of human beings involved in that process used to be a lot more. So everybody in that value chain could take a little piece for themselves. But in this Amazon universe, it's all about eliminating those cogs and, and just doing A to B. So it, yeah, a drone is maybe the end game but even right now, there's a huge impact to that w that form of consumption. Yeah, it's it, it's it's so strange to watch the climate shift and change. Mm -hmm. and it's so strange to watch just online shopping. Right. I remember I, I I did some online shopping a year ago. I mean, not a year ago, a, a while ago rather. And um, I forget what it was that I bought, but somebody said, "Where'd you get that?" I said, "I got it online." And he was like, oh, man, I wouldn't buy anything online. Put your credit card out there. That's <laughs> How crazy. long ago was that? A long time ago. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I, don't rem I, I was on when, – when online shopping first existed, I was buying things. Yeah, I was same. just like, this is yeah. so crazy. So cool. You could find something online then it shows up in your – I think that um, now it's almost more common to shop online than it is to not shop online. Yeah, I mean right? – I don't know. Well, my depends. mom still yeah, says depends. I would never put my credit card on there. <laughs> and my mom's not like super old, but I think that we're, we just do it so we think everyone does well, it. Well, and, and it depends on the item let's as well. Let's find out. What percentage – let's take a guess. What percentage of, of Americans shop online? I'd say 70 60 percent. Oh, that actually do it at all? Yeah. Frequently. Ooh. Frequently, I'd say fifty to sixty percent. Well, what's free, what's frequently though? Once a week. <laughs> first of all, if you type once in, every once a month. If you type in what percentage of Americans, the first question is, are gay? <laughs> <laughs> what What does that tell you about people <laughs> using Google search? <laughs> what percentage of Americans are gay? Is first. What percentage are Christian? To be is honest second. with you, though, is that really that strange? If you think about it. Yes. Do you have the answer to that question? The gay part. Yeah. Uh, we, all how of close? Them. How close would we actually? Everyone's be? gay. <laughs> just need it's enough like time 80%. alone. <laughs> yeah, everyone's gay. You just need enough time. In I'm just curious what that top. So the search is a common search. I'm just curious yeah. what the top result actually is. No, Wiki for Wikipedia. <laughs> what? what do you think based on your own findings? Like the people you, I think I would all of say, America. See, I don't have enough experience with all of America. Well, just humans. Canada. You you guys are America North. Let's no, be no, no. I, I know, but I'm saying like I, I, I'm talking more about urban right. urban areas versus rural areas. Rural areas, they're all gay. <laughs> All those farmers are gay as fuck. <laughs> they might not even know. See, it. that's what I'm talking about. Like, I have I have <laughs> city experience. I don't have any country experience. Do you think it's different? I city, do. I think they hide it in, more. In fact, I think the city country thing is more defining than than say the city you come from. Like people say, oh, somebody from Chicago is like this, and somebody from New York is like that. In fact, I've I've been in marketing meetings where they have specific terms for those urban type of people. And you talking about black folk? No, 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 not, er, crazy, not urban. Like, no, no, not urban like that. But I mean, <laughs> you can't say I mean urban. The, I mean the life experience of a person who lives 
in a high rise right. versus the type of person who has a few acres. And right, right. It's right. a totally different life experience, and therefore the culture that you you know participate in is going to be a little bit different. So when people say to me, for example, oh, you know, you're Canadian, well, you've been to Toronto a lot, so you know it's roughly the same kind of idea. But when you ask me like a question like that, statistically, I would say Toronto's probably more like New York than New York is like Kansas City. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, I agree with you on that. Except folks in, well, the, the big difference between Canadians and Americans is how nice everybody is. <laughs> There's way more nice people for whatever reason, you even so? in urban centers in Canada. Yeah, I know, I know, I notice people say excuse me and sorry yeah. a lot more. That Excuse happens. me, sorry, pardon me, yes. how you doing, smiling. Yes. Smi- it's just a friendlier place. That I, happens. I, I feel like it's probably because you don't have this background of conquerors. You know, it's a, <laughs> it diff- could be. It's a different could kind be. of mentality yeah. that's set up the country. Yeah. Whereas America There's is- definitely a different culture. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. But you- close. It, oh, yeah, it's like a little bit twisted sort yeah. of, you know? And again, it, it varies depending on where you are, but one of the- one of the things that comes up more than anything is guns. Gun, the gun, the difference in the perception of guns, yeah. crime, etc. That conversation always comes up when I'm talking to, you know, people from America, that, asking me what the difference is. And that uh, famously, that Michael Moore documentary. What the hell? Which one was it? His, oh, one yeah, of his first yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Bowling for Columbine. Was it Bowling, Bowling for Columbine? Yeah, yeah. where he. What, he's from Michigan, and he went over the border to Windsor from mm-hmm. Detroit. And I don't know. He had some statistics in there, and people weren't locking their doors in Windsor. And I don't know. He, yeah, a lot of people he, thought that that was horseshit. I, I thought it was horseshit, too. But yeah. he was trying to draw some kind of conclusion there that even though we're culturally identical, we don't shoot each other, which obviously is not true. But some of the statistics coming out of Chicago right now are crazy as far as the amount of people that are dying yeah. due to gang warfare etc like there's nothing like that at all so i don't know there nothing is nothing like that in canada no no, no. And i think toronto uh, i don't want to say a number because i don't know but murder figures i mean it's one of the safest you should thank w- rob ford <laughs> i just think he's kept you guys safe by doing all your crack <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what he does keeping it off the street it's strategy hanging out with the thugs yeah he's what trying it, to calm yeah. everybody down what towards is that book? overweight white is people that the, is that the prince that book about I don't remember, but a king needs to be down with the people. Mm-hmm. You see, the minute he gets up on his high horse up on a hill somewhere, too good for crack. He can't relate anymore. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> free, no, Rob, I don't, free Rob Ford. That's what <laughs> I say. I think he's running again. He's running good. Uh, against a, he por- a porn star. Actually, perfect. Yep. The world's gonna end. Yep. It's fucking the aliens I think, are gonna but land. I, see, I think that is the perfect win. Nikki Benz. That's the perfect. Uh, k- kind of way to look at politics is that if if these people can be there and nothing actually happens, there's no actual effect of it. It, it, it for me, it exposes politics as a whole. Well, it, politics, given the state of our culture, I think the most intelligent, most capable people don't want that job. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> they exactly. they decide no. I'll just get some puppet in place to do That's my right. bidding and pay them off. Or you know, it's obviously not. That planned out, like mm-hmm. one guy is pulling of course, the strings. Of course, but there are most people don't—they don't want a job that doesn't pay that well. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a shitload of your time, and uh, everyone's going to hate you no matter what you do. <laughs> like, yeah, what? Who wants that job? That's smart. Not me. That's the problem. Not me. We have real issues. Definitely. All right, uh, it's saying actually that America's uh, there's, there's several different articles about shopping online, what the numbers were, but it's overtaking stores. It's saying now, yeah, forty percent. Forty-seven percent of consumers said the internet would be their favorite shopping destination. Wow! Yeah, here's in 2013. It says more than eighty percent of the online population has used the internet to purchase something. So at least once, and that's the only people that have used the internet. So that of all, I'd probably say it would be a wow. lot lower. I'd probably say like sixty percent globally. Like, yeah, there's some yeah. people who don't have access. I how guess. about how many people shop on their phone? What would you say there? Oh, that's growing rapidly. Mm-hmm. I know that for yeah. a fact. Uh, I don't know the number. Seven out of ten smartphone owners will use their smartphone for holiday shopping. Wow. Finding store locations and checking and comparing prices being the top two uses. Yeah. With 45% of the consumers saying they use social media to assist them with their holiday shopping. Definitely. Fascinating. I, I think social media is a huge, huge, huge factor Definitely. in buying electronics. Huge. I mean, we were talking your friend Marcus. 
Marquez. Marquez, yeah. who uh, also has uh, videos online. Right. Great, Amazing. really in detail videos about cell phones, yep. especially. Yep. He's helped me a lot. I've, I've really enjoyed his videos. That yep. it, I was talking to him about it. I was like, there's never been a thing like this before. No. And they, uh, they actually, we were involved in some report recently. Uh, it was some university report. Uh, I'm, I'm not remembering the name, but they did some tallying to figure out how many people watch videos like that prior to making a purchasing decision, the percentage. In in our world, in the tech space, it's huge. Wow. The, the numbers were staggering. And so there's this really awkward thing going on right now where the influencers are becoming the retailers in a way. Wow. We're taking on that role where it used to be a guy in a blue shirt at a Best Buy who could give a shit about the job. Right. Who you kind of had to deal with whatever information he had. You didn't have a choice. And now it's like, why would we... It's not very... It's not the best use of resources to take a bunch of unsophisticated individuals with a part-time job and put them in that role which is essentially a fairly sophisticated role, just keeping up with all this shit, which is yeah. crazy. So let's take one guy, give him video as a platform, and then allow for him to reach millions. It's also the difference between someone taking on that role as a job and someone who's extremely passionate about electronics. Completely agree with that. That's yeah. For you, like and a guy like you, you would probably, no matter what your job is, you would still be passionate about electronics. 100%. I'd still be having the exact same conversations. Sometimes I, I feel like I might even be more passionate because I wouldn't be jaded by the whole thing. You know what I mean? Like right. I think in a, in a weird way that might happen. But, uh, you know, there's there's definitely... There's definitely this change happening right now where social media is allowing for individuals who you don't know in your personal life to take on the role uh, where that used to be for somebody connected to you, you know, immediately connected to you. Now, the the word of mouth marketing, which was, was which was the most powerful, is still the most powerful, is transitioning from word of mouth in real life, real words, to social media words. Because even though you might be unreachable to people in real life, you're not. Because of social media. So so Joe Rogan is an influencer. I'm an influencer. Marquez is an influencer. And all of a sudden, uh, you're, you're managing this social group of a million friends. Essentially, that's the way they look at it. Yeah. You know, you, you're building that connection. You have this two-way communication. You're producing hundreds of videos. Right. You're, you're pumping out hundreds of tweets. It's uh, you, you take on a different role. And you're super responsible in a way. Like, say, if you choose a certain phone and it turns out to be a piece of shit. It's, oh, for sure. A, a massive burden on you for that sure. would destroy... Like, to be unjustly, like, it, there was no way it would be worth it because it would kind of, like, stain you forever. Yeah. Like, your p- people's perceptions of your judgment. And, and mo- you know, and most importantly, if you are if you grew up invested in this, you know, like I did, like, mm-hmm. just wanting to get my hands on the next thing, it's if, if you're actually excited, it's super hard to fake it. Yes. You know what I mean? It, to yeah. fake it e- one way or the other way. It's, it's, there's something about the format, the third-party format. Like, brands, they'll put out their own videos. Don't mm-hmm. put out a feature video on right. their product. Nobody wants that. Yeah. Nobody wants your super polished version of the way you want the thing to be interpreted. Yeah. Uh, in conversations I've had, it's like I'm I'm playing the like unboxing videos in general. I'm playing the role of you. That's why traditionally they were shot point of view, mm-hmm. point of view because it's your head. You're about to go experience this. And when I was playing around with the Google Cardboard VR, I was like, oh shit. Can you imagine this idea being expanded on of consumption through someone else, having experiences that would be unavailable to you through someone else's perspective? Mm. Because oftentimes I'm playing with items that people don't have the money to buy, at least not immediately. They may be thinking about it or they may just be watching it for entertainment. There's all kinds of different viewers. But I can imagine being a kid really wanting something and the closest I could get to it was that experience of getting it, opening it, etc. And imagining Mm. that perspective as being mine, you know. Well, the unboxing uh, videos are always very cool because, you know, you get to you get a real sense of the product, like from from the purchase to your hands yeah. to discovering it. Mm-hmm. Whereas like other times you like the guy already has it out. It's already fully charged. He's he knows how to work it. So mm-hmm. he's swiping back and forth and showing you all mm-hmm. the things. But you would never be able to talk a producer of a television show into letting you film <laughs> 20 minutes on a fucking new LG phone. They would go, no one's going to watch that. You know, uh, I, I, I've i heard of, I think maybe it was Virgin. Somebody put, put some tech videos in the airplanes 
which were kind of extended in, in length. I don't know. People the, would definitely watch them. The they, world is changing, yeah, you know? It's it, totally changing. Those but, producers that are in that in that business, in that world, maybe they couldn't understand it. But the audience and the numbers, they don't lie. Well, the content delivery device of television, like Terrible. it's going to be on at 8 o'clock. Terrible. It's going to go from 8 to 9, and that's when you got to be there or Terrible. DVR it. I, have to, I love this conversation. I, I feel like it's not... It's not us who need to be adapting to them. It's them that need to be adapting to us. Well, there's no need. As technology has started to change what online video mm-hmm. is, and now you have like Netflix documentaries yes. and television shows and comedy specials. What, what is the difference between something that's on Netflix and something that's on television? It's, it seems the same thing to me, and that's, it's m- becoming more and more prominent, and it's going to get to a point where it's going to eclipse it because – they don't have the limitations of you have to watch it at this time. It's only on then. You got to sit through commercials. Mm-hmm. All the silly limitations. You're, you're dealing with a more sophisticated delivery system, and in the past, sophisticated evolutions of systems are never held back. You can't stop them. You can try, yeah. but you. Where's Blockbuster? Yeah, it, it, they fucked up. There was a bunch of dudes sitting around a table like this with gray hair, saying people like to go and rent a movie you know it's an outing that's what they like to they do. do do it and then the wife gets that, to pick that's right on that's Tuesday, right Tuesday, and the that. husband gets to pick <laughs> on the wednesday tonight's my night and they like the uh-huh. classics the classics for seven day rentals and yeah. late fees do you remember late fees yeah can you believe that we put up with that shit i'll do you one better how about rewind fees <laughs> whoa now i can't go with you there i can't get that far back <laughs> remember the rewind fees yeah that was bullshit that was so, so you bullshit. don't rewind yeah. and they're charging you Money? Charge you money yeah. if you didn't Holy. rewind. The, did you re- rewind the video? You're like, uh, I think I did, and then they look at it. No, you didn't. <laughs> like, who's considering user experience there? Like, how about some customer service? Well, you know, my friend figured out that most of the time the people that work at Blockbuster are way too dumb to know whether it's fully watched or fully rewound. Mm. They would like look at it. <laughs> so what he would do is just fast forward it to the very end and then say, "It's look, it's totally rewound." They would go, "Oh, okay." Because they didn't know if it was rewound oh, which or, side or it was on. they didn't couldn't th- 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 this one th- that right. does it go like that mm. or is it like this yeah. like where's which the start does it go clockwise <laughs> does it go okay <laughs> getting back to that conversation about the uh, about the internet as a delivery method uh, there's this this thing happening now where online content creators with really large audiences are getting approached by traditional media. You know, they, they they are wanting to bring them over into that world to try and generate some interest in traditional media to an audience that generally isn't interested in that content. And the prob- there's, there's problems occurring where those people aren't translating and vice versa, or they're trying to mold them into something else. There's a lot of really big content creators that have branched out in that way. And there's some sort of feeling like once you've got... Once you're on TV, you've made it, you know, mm-hmm. which is still appealing to a lot of people, but not not at all for me because when I see, like, uh, like I said before, a more sophisticated delivery system, I want – for me, I, we, we've won when we've convinced them that – when we've convinced them to come work with us, not the other way around, you mm-hmm. know, and, uh, and I feel like there's a lot of people – there's a lot of people that are undermining how cool all of this is by taking their services and saying and and, and saying, uh, oh, I'm gonna I'm not gonna upload on my channel as much anymore because I have a show on this channel or because I'm working with this brand or uh, because I'm in commercials now or whatever it is. And that's a real thing that's happening with big YouTube stars. That's fascinating. So big YouTube stars are getting lured into the dark side. That's right. They're getting pulled over. Come with us. That's right. We'll control the content, but we'll pay you. That's right. We'll give you a pay. Steady, payment. steady money. That's Gold right. coins from the bottom <laughs> of the mountain. Come with us. That is a real thing because their yeah. whole business is based around control. They have to control the assets. Like record deals. Think about record deals. Music companies. Yeah. All that shit got overhauled. Well, I heard there's, a, I don't know what podcast company it is, but one of the podcast networks got sold. Got sold to some radio conglomerate mm, or some shit like see, that. There you go. I remember when that happened, I was like, wow, that's weird. Why would they want to buy a podcast network? Nerd- Nerdist. It, didn't they get bought by uh, like Warner Brothers or some kind of form of Warner Brothers? I don't know. Find out what the actual, yeah. well, who cares? I mean, I, I've let, had, let him do whatever he wants right. to do. I've had but, I've had offers to buy my channel. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at you. You said that with pursed lips. That's right. You said that very, very, very That's serious right. tones. That's right. Yeah, well, hey, it's worth a lot of money. A lot of people are uh, checking it out. We could just change the way you look at things, Lewis. You're just a little too critical. 
Like, why are you so mean when it comes to certain devices that could generate millions of dollars? Oh. If you just flavored your things. I just things... can't imagine that life being that person, though. Really, just a shell, you know? Well, it's also it's completely contrary to what you're passionate about. What you're passionate about is innovation. What you're passionate right. about is the consumer experience. Like, I, I was kind of really interested in the last conversation that we had. You, you were talking about the user experience, the UE, which right. I had never really thought of right. as a concept. But it is, it's not just a user interface, but it's the experience. How does it make you feel? Start like to the, finish. The beveled edges, yeah. the, the, the polished the glass. The, the box that it comes in. Yeah, what is all that about? And that's something that... You only would sort of get if you were truly passionate about this. Look so, at look at Apple. I mean, they they're trying to control the experience start to finish from the retail perspective. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between walking into an Apple store and a Verizon store. Yeah, the Apple's they got it nailed. They do have that nailed. They everything looks Apple-y. <laughs> you know, you go into the Apple store, it's totally Apple. -y. I feel I feel like we shouldn't go off on Apple talk again because this people get upset. they can suck it people get they can upset. suck it is the reality is that they make the best laptops <laughs> they make the best desktops they make the best phones they just do the yeah. Android phones the best thing about the Android phones is that they're open is that anybody could make things for them is that the screens are bigger is that you know there's a lot you could watch flash on them there's a lot of really positives when it comes to Android phones but when it comes to like who has made an Android phone that can fuck with an iPhone the closest is like that HTC M8 and yep. I've ha I've had that. It's it's, it's good, you know. Cam camera HTC shit. One, yeah, it's good. Actually, it's me and Mark has we did a uh, inadvertent camera test out the window of our hotel. Mm -hmm. We check in. He's three four floors above me, so I'm twelve. He's fifteen. We both snap the exact same photo unknowingly. Mm -hmm. I use a 5s. He uses the M8, right? And we both post to Instagram sec within seconds of each other. I see mine go live, and right underneath, I see his. Mm -hmm. And you should check out. I'll show you the results. Yeah, well, it's it's. I've seen I'll a bunch you. of the results from videos like yeah. Marcus's. I'll show you the results. It's just it's obvious. The iPhones have a better camera. It's a better. It's a slicker design. It's there's a lot of great things to it. But damn, the Android's fucking. It's close. Okay, it's so getting check, really close. Check this out. Just scroll down to the next one. That's the iPhone 5s on the top. We t we essentially took the same and scroll oh down, God. and that's the M8. Oh my God, that's incredibly different. Look at all the yeah, detail. but it's not at the same time because the sun is different. No, on the horizon. No, dude. Come on, really? That's within seconds of one another. That's insane. Look at Why, the detail. How come yours? Like, look at when you see your sun. It doesn't show any like like what is that? The the, blast, the flare. The flare. Flare. Yeah. But look at his flare. Yep. And look at the interesting part for me is if you scroll down a little more and you look in the shadow portion. Mm -hmm. There's no detail in the M8 shadows. It's terrible. It looks like shit. You go up to mine. Look at the detail where the cars are parked and that building in the forefront. Yeah, that is. It's fascinating that you guys did that accidentally. And then, yeah, because it it just goes to show you, like <laughs> the the mindset. You know, like, we both saw the yeah. cool shot. We're like, I'm gonna take the shot, and and the difference in the output. Yeah. You know? See, now this sort of uh, the the context of the user experience, like the the passionate, you know, uh, person who's into uh electronics that can't you can't fake that you can't you know you can't. it is that's why it's so hard there are so many uh users or guys like us that really really like the interface on stock android like we talked about last time uh, i have a nexus with me as well pretty much all the time but it's so hard to ditch the iphone mm -hmm. because when you want to make a photo when you want to communicate through photography there's just no other way right now and, and it's not uh, this what, that Sony one that takes very high mega, the one that has an extra extra big fat right, lens. Yeah, the Nokia one. Is it Nokia? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Is there a Sony that has that as well? The, so, the Sonys have some great cameras too. The Sony's a waterproof one, right? That's they the, have a waterproof, a totally one, yeah. waterproof mm -hmm. phone. Totally waterproof phone. Definitely. How, why is this not waterproof? <sighs> that's a good question. That's I'm, stupid. Back back when <laughs> back then, like when the this really hasn't the body hasn't changed much since the five. Right. And back then, it really wasn't a thing. People weren't making it. It's just it's relatively recent. Samsung's is uh, IP rated for dust and water. Uh, so is I don't know if HTC's is, but definitely Sony's is. It's a relatively new thing that that's happening. They can go you know a meter underwater for ten minutes. Yeah. The, hey, the next one might be. Yeah. The next one might be. But it's not, it's for them. That's not a huge priority. It, it just doesn't seem like a huge problem. But it gets everybody gets their phone ruined by pouring a drink on it. Like that's the number one reason <laughs> phones get ruined. They I would say I would say cracked screens. Toilet. Toilet. I would say cracked screens are probably higher than water, but they're both high. 
Speaking yeah. of ca- cracked screens. <laughs> cracked screens almost universal, right? Doesn't everybody get a cracked screen? Eventually? I've never had one, but I've had to move a turd to get my phone out of out of the toilet. Did you kill the phone or did the phone survive? No, phone survived. Really? How how long was did it you in push there? Pushed it away. I, it, thumbnail? Liter- it literally like I got up and then it fell in the toilet and I was like ah! Put my hand through oh, turd, instant, grabbed yeah. it, pulled it out, <laughs> and then and then uh, just rice? dried it off. Did you put it in a bag of rice? No. He probably didn't even wash his hands as fuck. No, no I did I the shaky Haven't thing yet. and the, the that's the, good enough. The hair dryer. Oh really? <laughs> what you should do if that happens is tw- twenty four hours in a bag of rice. Yeah. It'll it'll pull away all what, the what, moisture. What I usually end up just doing is then having something stop working and then uh, take it to the Apple or call right. the Apple store right. and they will send you one without. A- Apple's it. great with that. <laughs> Here's the weird thing though: they put, or at least they used to. I don't know anymore. I used to do a, like some repairs on these things, crack them open and get crazy like that. But they used to put little litmus paper in there that would show. If or, it got wet. It yeah. would turn red. It used to be in the headphone jack. I don't know. They probably they are still, still do it. Oh, they, they still, still do, do it. it. Okay. But they, but if you call, they don't. There's no way from them to check it. Well, right? here's the, here's a question. <laughs> when when you say if you drop something in the toilet, you drop a phone in the toilet. Yeah. Should you shut it off and throw it in the bag of rice, or should you leave Oftentimes it on? Oftentimes, it turns itself off. But it, yeah, if you if it's still on, to turn it turn it quickly, off. quickly yep. shut it off. Yeah. So shut it off. Yeah. Throw it in the bag of rice. Yeah. What I usually do is just hours. suck the water out of it. Oh Christ! Oh, but but you know, but but I wasn't going to do it with the poop ones, so. right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and it's gross because when you suck it off, if you look at your iPhone, like there's the top the, part where the the this this where your ear usually goes, mm-hmm. but there's water that's in there. So you suck that, and you're like pretty much sucking earwax. It's gross. I never yeah, your, I never thought never of sucking on my phone ever. Deep well, into that, you well, mean like I go. <laughs> Like really hard. How many times have you done this? Probably like five times. So where's your phone? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, where's your ear going? That you're getting earwax on that. Uh, if you area? look, if you look, there's like a little grill that's oh, right there. Right. And if you look really close, you could actually see there's shit in there. Yeah. I was thinking about the jack itself. I, I know, but yeah, you s- you have to jack. suck all of them. There's the bottom one that you suck, and then yeah. you suck the power. Button. Does that work? Can you really suck the water out? Will that's, it really help? That's what well, I've always done. You mean yeah, getting getting water away from it <laughs> is going to be a positive thing, but <laughs> but you sound like a guy on the phone. He's <laughs> like customer hey, man, service here, cus- dude. Listen, um, I've been sucking on my phone. Is that cool? I'm just <laughs> saying it in the po- most polite way possible. I wouldn't recommend it. No. Here's the answer to our other question: 1.7 percent of American adults identify as gay or lesbian. 1.7. See. I had heard 10%. That's the gays. They just want you to think that everyone's gay. Right. Yeah. Goddamn. Tough stat to get, though. Who's taking that? It's yeah. a good question. It's a really good question. Because yeah. what percentage of gays are in the closet versus out? That's a good question. I would wonder. What do you think? <laughs> Again, impossible stat to get. I would say 50-50. Yeah. Just take 20 friends that you know and then think, all right, how many of those 20 people are gay? How many people are those do you think are in the closet? How many just like the right. how it tastes? We all know a few people that are in the closet. Yeah. Everybody so. does. Yeah. And public it's, figures, too, it's really <laughs> you speculate on. It's really sad. Mm-hmm. It's sad when someone's in the closet. You know, when you got a guy who's a friend like Justin Martindale who's out and happy and right. silly about it. You know, and nobody judges them. It's like, it's no different than judging someone who, you know, likes to drive a certain kind of car. So, like, right. was it, why do you give a fuck? It's just, it's a weird, you uh, know. Does it, is it more the individual, though? Like, c- is it possible that somebody's experience is exactly the way they want it without coming out? Like, is could, could it be that there's too much pressure to come out, too? Sure. There you definitely. There's a lot of factors. It, yeah. It, I think it's all depends entirely on... Your environment, your yeah, family, your definitely. religious background, yeah. where you grew up. If you grew up in San Francisco, it's probably pretty easy to be gay. Right. If you grew up in Kentucky, it's probably pretty hard to come out. You know, you're uh, in a fucking deer stand with a bunch of buddies. <laughs> you go, hey, man, some shit I mean to get off my chest. <laughs> you know, you're all listening to Garth Brooks songs <laughs> and shit. And like, one of you just happens to be gay. Mm-hmm. Like, that guy's fucked, man. Yeah, he leaves the community at that yeah, point. It's, 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 uh, that's weird. You know, if we had a situation where one of our comedian friends came out as gay out of nowhere, like say if Ari just decided to tell us, you know what, guys, I'm fighting this, but I'm pretty sure I'm gay. Whatever, we'd be like, whoa, what? That's weird. Okay, wait, you had that one guy on. Which guy? He's ten percent gay. 
Oh, uh, Brody. Brody? Yeah. 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 He's 84% kidney, <laughs> 84. determined. What would Ari with a lisp sound like? We wouldn't have a lisp. It's Oof. not like, Oof. You, Oof. I'm coming out of the closet, guys. I'm tired of talking normal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that happens, Joe. I think I think, I think think Once you're out, you can start to enhance it. I think, it, yeah, yeah, because you, you hide it and you breathe it in. You mm. know, you try to hide your gayness. Mm -hmm. But once it's out, it's like, oh, my God, I'm so ready to. Well, some gay guys would totally disagree with that because it's gay guys that like really gay men, mm. like really lispy, femi mm. gay men. Mm -hmm. And there's gay men that like men. That yeah. are men who like other men, and they don't talk gay yeah. at all. Yeah, like That's Segura tough. or something. That's tough. Yeah, like if Segura was gay, <laughs> you know, if Segura was living with a guy who looked exactly Kreischer. like him, Kreischer, him and Kreischer. Just yeah, if those two guys assholes. were bears, they wouldn't be. You know, they would. They wouldn't be obvious. No, right? That's a delicious couple. Just two imagine them, they're great, whether or not they have sex or not. They're just so, two awesome guys. So, what percentage do you think then are complete, like flaming? The whole way versus I think that's you'd probably, never you'd never know. That's I don't know one point seven percent. If it's one point seven, so it's, let's round it off. Let's say it's two percent that are in the closet, two percent out of the closet, four percent of all Americans gay. Are we willing to say that? I'm willing to say that. I'm willing to say that. I'm willing to say that. I'll go with you I think on that. that's probably about right. So four percent of all Americans being gay. I'd say super gay dudes. It's like one percent. Yeah. yeah, one out of, th and that's mostly drug connected to drug, probably like just raging. Like I want to fuck you in the ass. I don't know, man. I've, I I have some friends that are uh, a gay couple that uh, live in my neighborhood, and they're pretty obviously gay, but they're not like partiers or animals or anything wacky. They're no, not doing. I don't think they're doing drugs. It's, you know what's weird about it to me is like mm. I know for myself I don't really want to be defined by anything. I don't want to be defined by one thing about myself. Then you're queer. That's yeah. the queers. Oh, okay, the perfect. Queer, I'm queer, gonna fit. That's what queer is. I'm, I'm gonna fit right in. But you know the LBG. When somebody put like the last thing I want is some kind of label, but in that world it seems like that's exactly what you know what I mean. They want to be labeled. Yeah, it's yeah. so it's so weird. It's like I, I don't know. I think because there's a lot of. Um, they want to be identified, first of all, they're proud to be out. Like, to be out is probably, like, a huge relief off of your back. Right. It's just, you know, just to be out and accept and not have to hide that shit anymore, not have to have that hovering over your head, that, pro that probably really fucks with people. Um, so it's probably, like, an affirmation in a lot of ways mm. to just say you're gay. But the queer thing is, I think they don't want to be, I, just, I don't want to butcher this, my queer friends, they don't want to be described as a he or a she or a gay or a straight. They want to oh, be them. Right. There's those right. folks too. I mean, otherwise, why would it be queer? Why wouldn't it be bisexual? Like, what are you? Are you? I'm queer. Okay, what does that mean? Are you gay? Are you straight? Are you bisexual? Hmm. I'm just queer. So you're just all right. I got it. I think I got it. I don't know if I have it. You know, it's it's so that's a real that's a thing. Yes, queer. Mm -hmm. That's what queer is. No one's ever told me that before. Yeah, you know, it's fucking Canadians, we keep shit from you. Yeah, I guess so. There's a lot of things we could. Guys... I'm sure if I investigated, I could figure it out. But... Maybe, maybe. No, I mean we have. There's one hell of a pride parade in <laughs> Toronto. One hell of a pride parade. Is it queer pride though? That's a fucking confusing parade. Because if you're truly queer, you wouldn't even show up for it because you don't even <laughs> identify with it. You don't identify with that group that's running that parade. Wow. Yeah, I think people for the longest time have been suppressed. In, and still are. But I mean, think for the longest time they didn't have uh, an outlet where they can identify with other people that have also been suppressed in very similar ways. So whether it's being gay or whether it's being transgender or whether it's being... They didn't have a community before to support them. Mm. They just had scattered groups of people all across the country with no way to communicate with each other. Yeah. And now that you can... I, these, I think it's like, it's, it's, pro it's probably the time that we're in. I don't yeah. think it'll be like that forever. At some point... What do you mean? Well, at some point... I feel like the it won't be as exciting as it is now. To so, be a queer? <laughs> here's what I mean by that is since it's only recently become as accepted as it is now, right? Right. 50 years ago, I don't know what they were going to do to somebody who came out right. or, or 100 years ago or whatever. It was obviously a tougher time. So eventually it'll be so commonplace that it won't even drum up nearly the discussion that it does now. Yeah, but as long as it's only 4% of the population, right. it's always going to be a I marginalized so. group. I mean, think I guess so. I can't go with you on that. But do you think it's a, always going to be 4%? Is this something that's is this something that is a growing figure, a shrinking that's, figure? That's where it becomes a real problem in the Christian community because that means a bunch of queers are indoctrinating <laughs> all the youngins. That's what's going on. They're <laughs> spreading their queer. Well, 
Well, there's a lot of people that believe that if you sexually indoctrinate someone into the world of homosexuality very young in life, that they'll identify with that. And that it'll imprint. This is, a, this is a deep conversation, dude. It's a deep conversation, but it has more to do with. What is it with, with the pedophile sex- the pe- pedophile stuff? I'm not saying pedophilia. No, 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 but, right. but the, the likelihood of a person who was molested mm-hmm. by a pedophile turning into a pedophile themselves. Yes. Yeah, I think that's, that's documented. That is documented. I don't. I don't know if those are totally related. You know, no. May, just how young, be. young, young exp- experiences mm-hmm. that you have when you're young help shape your perception of so many things. It does, and also um, women who have been molested at a young age tend to uh, lean more towards prostitution and towards uh, pornography and towards a lot go. of things along those lines. That their ideas about sexuality get morphed. But yeah, it's it's interesting, man. Um, the the four percent thing, like you know what? That's the, there's another question, like what makes someone gay? I mean, how many people are gay because of a choice? How many people are like, I'm I tired believe- of fucking dealing with chicks. I'm just gonna learn to start liking <laughs> dudes. How many of them? I, mean, I feel like the company line is that people are born gay, but. I always had difficulty with that. I Why? mean, I, that? I have I have difficulty believing people are born anything. Oh, in, in, you need to meet this kid that lives on my street. Like no, but but by this I mean by this I mean that <laughs> some percent some percentage of our existence is nature and some percentage of our existence is nurture. Mm. Right? It's a mixture. It's not right. any one. It's not concrete. You don't come out with a concrete perspective on anything. Except this kid down my street. <laughs> he's five and he's gay as fuck. There's well, five, no but doubt five, about but it. by five. I don't. I think we underestimate how quickly characters built on an individual between the ages of one to two or two mm-hmm. to three. We look at a five-year-old, and for us as adults, five years is nothing. It's a blink, but for them, it's so yes. It's such a huge span, and so much is happening in that period of time. Oh yeah, and your childhood being traumatic is incredibly hard to get over. Mm-hmm. It's just the fact that it happened fifteen years ago. It set the boundaries. And the framework, sort of the building blocks of your personality, and to kind of go back and repair that shit, very difficult to do. Yeah, some as people oppo- never do. Some people, most people, I think, never do. Mm. But as opposed to um, someone who's born and raised in a really like, I have friends that grew up fucked up, and they're just there's something about the fucked upness that they encountered that just. They're gone. They're never going to come all the way back. Mm. They're never going to look at themselves objectively. They're never going to step back and try to fix many or any of the personality issues they might have developed because of like a protective mechanism that they sort of developed as a mm-hmm. young person. They're just not going to do it. A shut off button. Yeah. There's just yeah. whatever it is, they're, yeah. they're done. They're yeah. done growing, changing. And then other people, like you meet them and they're consistently exploring their personality and their life and improving upon themselves and mm. doing new things. You know, I love when I talk to someone like, dude, I took up scuba diving. Like, what? That's awesome. <laughs> Tell me about scuba diving, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like people, I mean, and that's not the best example, but about someone who's like consistently and constantly trying to expand you know, their, their experiences and, and try to, and analyzing their life. And then there's other people that are just in a sea of bad decision making and alcoholism and drug abuse and gambling and this and that. It seems like it seems like it it can it can come out in so many different ways, but it it ultimately stems from being happy or not being happy. You know, mm-hmm. finding a way to get there. Right. Like, I mean, shit can happen to you, and you have that moment of interpretation where you can take it one way or take it down a, down a different path. And the more severe the experience, the the harder it is to take it in a positive way. As weird as that is, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, like. For example, failure, like that's the main way you learn how to do something. Yeah. So you t- so I'm going to learn how to ride a bike. Well, if I fall off that bike, I'm going to learn really quickly to stay focused so that that doesn't happen because there's pain on the other end of it. So here's this really negative thing that actually acts as the mechanism for getting me from A to B and getting better at something. But the pain portion on its own when you can't justify it, when you can't figure out the end message, when you can't figure out what I've learned because of this, that's when it's the toughest to digest. Yeah, I think there's a lot of folks that try to stay as comfortable as possible, as much as possible too, so mm. they're terrified of that pain. Right. So instead, they just don't experience much. They yes. just have like a very narrow world of, you know, and then maybe they'll experience like a little bit of emotional pain online every now and again, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like they'll put up a YouTube video and then read the comments and, <laughs> and that's, that's enough. No, no yeah. bike riding for them because that, that would right. be some real life pain. See, I have, I have two little kids. I have a four year old and a two year old 
and just like my life has changed a lot since having them just in analyzing their behavior and and then analyzing my own in, mm-hmm. in contrast to theirs like again yeah a- adults are constantly trying to find ways to avoid pain to yeah. avoid not not feeling great all the time yeah like we're complete you know risk avoidance i mean the average person whatever nine to five type individual them they put themselves out there for no reason my four-year-old there's a swing set he could go on the swing or he could pick one of the posts going to the the top and climb all the way to the top and sit he's four you know like what is driving him to do that because the adult mind would say oh you're gonna break your wrist or leg or whatever and he might and someone's going to blame me for it, fine. But that it's the drive portion in and of itself, this just wanting to experiment, that's the most exciting. That's the part that I want to tap into. That's the part that's contagious. You see him do that, and it's like, shit, why, do I, why should I fall in line? Even if it's not directly related, why does the next thing I do need to be the status quo? Right. Like what we did today. What we did today is not your average tech video. Right. Well, t- tell people what you did today. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to talk about it or yeah, not. Yeah, for sure. We could talk about anything and everything. What we did today, we ran a little test, a little experiment. <laughs> uh, do people know, most people know, behind this studio is an, a little mini archery range. <laughs> if you don't know that, you should know that. There's a couple pictures on Joe's Instagram feed. That's how I knew about it. Uh, a little mini archery range. And the experiment involved bringing some technology components out here to figure out how they would resist the impact of an arrow, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> Have I done a good job yes. so far? I, or I feel like I'm dancing around the subject. Okay, the upcoming iPhone, the iPhone 6, supposedly has a sapphire display or a display that's partially made of sapphire. Here's the problem with sapphire. How, te- how technical do you want to get about Get in this? there. Okay. Sapphires are really hard material. They've been using it on watch faces for a long time. It doesn't scratch easily. If you buy a Rolex or something, it's probably got a sapphire face or something, ah. like, something like that. But it's really expensive and it's really brittle. So for a flexible surface, it would be shit, shit t- shitty. And what a lot of people don't realize is that even if you have a, a stiff phone like an iPhone, there's a certain amount of flex that it can put up with without chipping or shattering like something like this you know you can put some force on it you could sit on it etc it doesn't crack when you bend over type stuff or chip very easily although people crack them anyway smash them anyways so companies came out with things like gorilla glass which are these flexible kinds of glass that are made out of uh laminated poly type bullshit a little bit of everything in there some glass some uh, minerals some plastic this new sapphire one which is supposed to be patented by apple is supposed to be the strongest we've ever seen so fewer people are going to end up in the Apple store with a cracked iPhone. Essentially, that's that's the way it's looking right now. So my buddy Marquez, who we talked about earlier, got his hands on and through a very similar source to who I've gotten my hands on components from before, got his hands on this glass, supposedly, allegedly, whatever. No, no, no. Uh, definitiveness there but what we think is the the upcoming glass put it through its paces scratched it with a knife scratched it with keys would not scratch right very durable but i met i was unimpressed because i said well we need to bust the thing we need to take the thing to the point of destruction this is not enough and i wasn't the only one there were people in the comments that were like well dude you (laughs) <laughs> and he did a great video, so he, he doesn't deserve it. But they were like, well, dude, sure, you bent it and scratched it. But at what point is it is it going to be destroyed? And so uh, we wanted to test that. So I sent him a message where I said, listen, me, you, let's figure out how to get this done. I think uh, maybe we should go to a gun range. That's what I said to him at first. <laughs> I, said, I, said, yeah, I said on DM, I said, have you ever been to a gun range? He said, I like where this is going. Then I responded with, I think I can do one better. I said, "What do you think about an arrow?" He said, "Sold, right?" I said, "Let me reach out to let me reach out to Joe." So then I sent a message to Joe. Uh, it was kind of vague. I liked the way it was phrased, though. <laughs> I said, "Leaked iPhone sapphire screen, an arrow, and a high speed camera." That was it. Dot dot dot. What do you think about that? And he responded with, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> you hear me, folks? No hesitation. Fuck yeah! Right in the DM. 
That's what I love about this guy right here. So we came down and we did it. We made it happen and the video is going to go live. I have a shit ton of uh, data to look through because this camera is shooting at 960 FPS, which I, we, I'm going to have the calculation wrong here, but essentially an eight second clip is an enormous amount of footage. It's like minutes worth. So over over a minute, nine hundred and sixty frames per second. That's what we shot it at. Nine hundred and sixty. Yeah, it turned out to be second. what was it? Was like one minute of video equals one second. Was that the? Yeah. Is that is that it? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to go saying. on record right. as because as, as, I'm going to be wrong if right. I do go on record. But for those that are really into this shit, we were shooting on a an FS seven hundred at the highest frame rate possible. And uh, and basically, we're going to try and give you guys the most accurate representation of the impact that we can. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to spill it here. We got to leave a little reason to go check out the video. But uh, interesting results. Yes, we're not going to spill it. But <laughs> guess who wins? <laughs> <laughs> we did some other stuff too. It's not the phone. We didn't. <laughs> we, we didn't stop at the at the sapphire, the upcoming sapphire. We oh. had we had more fun than that. So. Plenty of incentive to head over to Unbox Therapy. Hit the subscribe button right now so you're ready when the video goes live because we're about to take over the internet. And we're counting on you guys to help us get there. Oh, we'll definitely promote it. Yeah. We, we shot some shit. We shot quite a bunch of shit. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, it was worth doing. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah, we brought a lot of cool people down there. I should shout everybody out. We brought... Uh, uh, Austin Evans, we brought John from TLD, we brought uh, Marquez, of course. Who else am I missing right now? I don't think anybody. No? I probably am being an Are asshole you? right now. Uh, Josh, also from TLD, was there. Anyway. Anyway. anyway we uh, made a, it happen. Bunch of, a bunch of cool, cool people. Way too many cameras were in the back there. You're going to see it all. We got behind the scenes. We got in front of the scenes. This is destruction at its best. It was awesome. It went down. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch a video. Uh, what what is it about men that uh, we were talking about this? Right, like men wanting to shoot things and blow them up. Like if you had to compare, like the numbers, just the sheer numbers. Forget about how many people are gay. The sheer number of <laughs> thing of things that get blown up by men. You know, like what is like the, buttholes? Things that get. <laughs> yeah, no chicks are sticking firecrackers up their butt. Think things that get like l like blown up in a field. How many things get blown up in a field that are Growing up, I used to blow women. up fish. You know, I used to put firecrackers in their mouth at, oh. and just blow them up after wow. fishing. So that's so rude. You should be you should be on some watch list somewhere. Right. You know that if you weren't before, yeah, you are now. Yeah, um, men like like how many different like refrigerators have been like stuffed full of dynamite? Definitely, it's all men, right? When, when I was a kid, I had an obsession with like opening stuff like this up. Like they would buy me, my parents would buy me some awesome piece of technology, and I would want to get inside of it mm -hmm. like keyboards and uh walkmans i used to open those up wow to just see what they were made of i don't know if this is an extension of that but ultimately you get to see what the thing is made of you know what i mean that's part of it i think for sure to to see inside once you shoot it look inside but blowing things up <laughs> it's also just to just blow things no, up no you're right you're right i'm stretching on that i was well, trying I think to put a two spin different there're two different desires like your desire is like the desire to see the wiring under the board yeah, which but is all, real but, but as but also well. like when the also when the arrow hits it like we're so used to seeing this in the context of ooh don't drop it right. oh, 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 oh don't spill on it right to see it in that light where fuck you you know <laughs> this thing right that you've been so concerned about for so long you know you're gentle with it you baby we fucking baby these things true you know and so to take the to take this thing that's on your conscience all the time where is it do i have it is it in my pocket right who doesn't do the slap the slap Everybody does. you got you slap the, the wallet phone you don't leave that premises until it's in there so to say fuck it even for a minute even for a second that's a win or you're just destroying things, <laughs> and you're just getting off on the fact you destroy things. Yeah, but it, but if it was, I mean, it was cool. But like, let's say we put some, I don't know, a fucking banana there. It wouldn't have been quite the same. Yeah, no, definitely more valuable things are cool to yeah. see explode for whatever. We're rebelling against That's right. our instincts. That's right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, exploding things. I don't know. Whatever. I lost it. I lost whatever yeah. I thought it was. It's it's exciting. I mean, there's also this just from a very straight up primal perspective, this idea of the, the impending doom. Like as a, as a viewer, you get to wait, you get to watch 
but you know the outcome. You already know what the yeah. fuck's going to happen, but you need to see it happen anyways. I know what I was going to say. Blend tech blenders. You ever right. seen that? Yeah. Throw will it, will a, it an blend? IPhone? Yeah. Will it blend? That's crazy. Yeah. They blend the fucking iPhone. They blend the shit out of that like iPhone. He, that dude blends. <laughs> My Vitamix couldn't take. I have a Vitamix and I have blend tech, and it couldn't do a pineapple. I cut a, put really? a pineapple in there. And it just overheat, kept on overheating. But luckily, there's a sensor in there that you just have to unplug it and wait 30 <laughs> minutes and shit. But I'm like, wait a second. Why can't this shit do a pineapple but like a You got to man up and get blend the blend tech, tech man. Yeah. I don't know. I, I enjoyed the Vitamix. You know what I like about the Vitamix? That plunger thing. Yeah, the plunger thing is nice. nice. But I never used it for anything other than kale shakes. Right. But uh, it's perfect for kale shakes. Works great. But the blend tech's better. Even for kale shakes because it really liquefies it. It brings it, it down to like a much smaller, smaller size particle. Does I, it? I use my blend tech, though, every day. Or my Vitamix every day. Like even if I'm just getting like, hey, I'm gonna get some apple juice. I put some apple juice and ice in it and make it like a frozen. Ice. It's I'm good, like, man. <laughs> it's good. I mean, you you should look. If the more you could give your digestive system a break, and blend shit up like that, yeah. like vegetables, it's good for you. It's good. It helps you poop too. God, good lord. That's the best thing about those kale shakes. The poops are fantastic. <laughs> I need help just there, man. Wild I, I guess I got to jump on a kill train. Just a wild log ride. Like like you're working on the Yukon, and there's a river, <laughs> and then the, the logs broke <laughs> loose, and they went down current. Like, ah! That's just like when you take a shit. It's just like, oh, hang on. Just hang on. Perfect. Woo! <laughs> and then you, you think, like, why isn't my shit always like this? Cause sometimes, you know, you go, I think i got to take a shit. I definitely have to take a shit. All right, let me just sit here and wait for this to come out. Right. right come how long should out. a shit, how long should you be in there for? How long should you be sitting down for? <sighs> it's really truly dependent on your diet. Right. I think um, the easier it is for you to shit is For it, you, for Joe Rogan, an experience in the bathroom, what's the perfect length of time? Depends on if I have my phone with me. <laughs> So sometimes I'll drag it out, I even when I'm done, <laughs> or a good magazine or a book that I'm into. I'll drag it out like I'm done shitting. I've, I've finished. <laughs> what's I just your, don't feel like pulling what, my pants out. What kind of re- have you set? A, what's your record for time after you've been finished for still chilling with the phone? Mm-hmm. My legs go numb all the time. <laughs> tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you got that iPhone. Our <laughs> Our used to have a joke about it. So true. <laughs> You know, you got that iPhone <laughs> resting on your elbows, right. resting on your thighs, and then you're leaning right. forward. And you're and just cutting weight. off all that You're blood. choking out your legs, essentially. Fuck. Yeah. Have you ever masturbated on the toilet? Like no. sitting on the toilet. Not, not <laughs> shitting, but just no. sitting on the toilet. No. 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 <laughs> like I had when the girl was over and I couldn't masturbate in front of her. So I would go to the bathroom like I'm going to take a shower and then just try to masturbate while sitting on the toilet. Why oh. don't you just have sex with her? She's right there. We're, I don't know. We're into it. Yeah. Too much work. Too much work. Too much work. So what happened? <laughs> what, what was what was the outcome? It's really like? hard. I, oh. I've only done it once. I've tried like three <laughs> it's times. Really hard. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. It's something about the sitting on the toilet. It's not. It's, it takes the, you p- out the of the position. It. I remember mm. somebody sending me something. A, not a product. They wanted to send me a product because they say we don't sit on the toilet properly, and it's this thing to adjust the way you sit. Oh, like a so, squat thing. Yeah. That's what it was. Like a platform like squat. That's that what put, it was. Yeah. Imagine that review. My God! Yeah, but, that but is supposedly the the way you're supposed to shit. I did. I looked it up. I went to their website <laughs> and I was like, "Holy shit! Everyone's shitting the wrong way." Yeah, we are. That is true. You, it it is easier for your bowels to work if you're if like you can also sort of adjust your posture. When <laughs> Stand you're on over the over top. <laughs> yeah, because I think probably the way I'm doing it with my phone, where I'm leaning forward, and I'm t- that's probably the worst way. Worst. Like you, yeah. what you should do is sure. like. Probably there you go. <laughs> straighten up and like mimic the squatting. The, the the perfect technique with Joe Rogan. Yeah, this is how you shit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I know your mom never taught you this. I'm here for you. Yeah, I think like a squatting sort of a thing like that, like with a with a straight back hmm. would be the way to do it. We gotta fix the morning pee boner problem because that shit like I still like I'm what's not the, good at pro- it. What's that? What do you mean? What's like where you have to like do that weird position to stand over the toilet and push your boner down just to pee into the Oh. You know? right. Yeah. Well, you just got to just go outside. Is that pee. what you do? Yeah. Oh, just pee outside. That. Really? That's what yeah. you do? Get close. Get one, one with nature. Over the place. Do you have a piss pot? Have we talked about this? I've, I, no. I have a piss pot. And I Buy use, your bed. <laughs> no, it's outside. I like to pee outside. For some reason, it's just more comforting. Just, I'll just walk outside and pee. And, and you animal carry it in a pot? How come you don't have a No, there's just a pot out there. It's a pot that's like a planted pot. 
bush. Oh, okay. So, so you're dirt hitting, in you're, there. Yeah, yeah. A little fertilizer for the plant. Yeah. It's not good for it. No, not, not, not at all. Dog piss kills lawns. I know that. Yeah. Definitely yellow. They disaster. Well, no, no, no. They, it's, yeah, like the, it stops being green. Yeah. I don't know what's in a dog's piss. It's the ammonia. But it doesn't seem to, to be the same as a human. Like when you pee on the grass, like if you pee on your grass, it doesn't seem to kill the grass hmm. the way a dog. Tastes the same though. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you could smell dog pee. It smells like regular pee. Mm, yeah, it cat definitely pee, does. Cat, pee's, cat pee's disgusting. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't know what, I don't know what you're into, man. But. Dirty little animals. <laughs> my cat, my oldest cat, oh, she's a problem. She shits in front of the toilet mm, now. Right. She's old as fuck. She's 18. Right. Mine just starts the shitting in front of my toilet, and it's like gray shit or something. They're a mess. They're getting old. When they get old, man, cats fall apart. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they hang in there for a long time. Like my cat's eighteen fucking years old. Yeah, She's wild. hanging in there, but every night, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> well, she doesn't know what's going on. She's eighteen. Hmm. She's probably got some sort of uh, neurological issue. Yeah, yeah. some Alzheimer's, kitty yeah. Alzheimer's, or something like that. <laughs> but she'll she she's just a racist as fuck. But she's not <laughs> <laughs> screaming in words at night. <laughs> I don't know if she can. Um, she remembers where the litter box is. Or she's two litter boxes in the house. But sometimes she's in the bathroom and she'll just shit in the wrong bathroom on the floor. Hmm. This is all new. Like yeah, over the mine last. Does that. And mine's also having problems jumping on little counters. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like falls all the time. Yeah. And I think she's starting to get blind or something. They just get weak, too. So you know, their at, legs what, are weak. at what point? Tomorrow. You... Bullets. <laughs> no. I got to let her. Yeah, I don't want her to suffer. You know, if I thought she was suffering, like most of the time she's cool. She's She has a problem shitting and, you know, she pees in the so wrong spot sometimes. It's a weird sometimes. one, though, man, putting an animal down. I put my dog down. Well, I mean, I didn't. Put it down right. personally. But you've but been there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's horrible. It's weird. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's weird because you know you don't do that to people. Well, you know, euthanasia. Some some, pe- some people say it's more humane. Well, it is more humane. Yeah, it's certainly more humane. If you knew that someone that you love dearly was suffering in right. some horrible way, mm-hmm. and they would probably stay alive for months or maybe even a year in this state before they their body eventually gave out, I mean, there's no hope to bring them back. The problem is there's so many people that would kill their parents. There's so many people that would kill loved ones, kill and if they had the choice. Like, people have had, there's been situations where a husband or a wife had been criti- in critical condition and the wife had been arguing to pull the plug or the husband had been arguing to pull the plug. And the massive controversy. The family gets involved. Everybody's angry. You know, so it's you can't just do that. You no. know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tricky- What about the person themselves making the call? Like, if they're still cognizant. How can you tell they're cognizant? They want to kill themselves. I mean, it's like wh- suicide's illegal, which is hilarious. Not everywhere. No. In other countries, you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in America, essentially, it's illegal everywhere. Right. You know, euthanasia is illegal. The, the, the uh, Kevorkian guy who— See, I person—I don't have a problem with it. If a person— if if a person could pass a psychological evaluation that they're cognizantly there, mm-hmm. a basic psychological evaluation, they say, listen, I'm sick of suffering or whatever— but there needs to be suicide houses. Like, you know, like they can go in and just like a big hole in the ground and no. fall in or something. <laughs> suicide houses. Like, like, like there should be a furnace. There should well, be like how a... about that suicide forest in Japan? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's weird. The way people choose to do it, too, they choose to do it with as little pain as possible. Very few people jump into volcanoes. Right. You know, how That'd many, be a how many badass people? way to go right there. Ooh, how long would that take? It'd be instant? Yeah. If you went head first. I think so. it would be instant. I think so. Yeah, you basically would just burst into flames. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's what they used to do, right? The bad people, they would throw them into volcanoes? Didn't they used to do that? Yeah. I don't know. In the I, Hawaii I, days? I never heard about it. I'm sure it's happened. King Kamehameha? It seems like they used to things. sacrifice it to the volcano yeah. gods, but oh. I don't know if that's a real thing or not. Well, sacrifice is <laughs> certainly a real thing, so you got to assume sacrifice by a volcano would be like the most, if you want to oh, think about yeah. a cool way to do it. Definitely. And the volcano. Although, how about like that Braveheart shit where they the torture and wa- making everybody watch the torture? Like that might be more badass because you, you're you intentionally keeping the guy alive. Yeah, but that's killing someone. That's not like human sacrifice. Oh. It's like human sacrifice. Oh, it, I guess you're saying it's a form of punishment. But yeah. they're never sacrificing the cool people. They're always sacrificing the assholes they don't like anyway. But by whose standards is, are they an asshole? That's a but problem. The king or whoever. He doesn't give a fuck about them. Right. But the king, by the time the guy gets to be a king, who knows whether he's a good guy or not? His judgment. Oh, he, I guarantee I mean? you he is not. <laughs> Joe versus the volcano. What is that? Uh, Meg that, Ryan movie? Yeah, but. 
Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks and Meg Ryan. And they something about sacrificing something mm. to them. Volcano. You sacrificed your fucking hour and a half of your life. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't, it see was. The, I don't a, know where the connection is. It was a sacrifice. <laughs> Meg, Han- Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks movie. Oh, Christ. Try watching, like, the, was Sleepless in Seattle. That was, like, one of the first internet based love affair movies. Oh. You've got mail. Wait, Remember that? Wait a minute. Isn't that You've Got Mail? Sleepless in Seattle. They were having an online correspondence, right? I think that was You've Got I Mail. I think that's You Got Mail. Is it? Yeah. yeah. What was Sleepless in Seattle? That was one where she had she squirted in the deli or something. <laughs> Remember she had an orgasm in the restaurant? Oh, it's you're famous right. for that you're scene. Right. Yeah. But yeah. wasn't that also like, oh, that was like they sent each other actual letters? Is that what it was? I don't remember. I don't that was definitely Billy Crystal, don't right? Yeah. So You've Got Mail was the first Tom online. Hank. What year was You've Got Mail? I would say 95, Nine. 6. Okay, let's, let's find out. Sleepless out. in Seattle. 95. But you see, You've Got Mail, that was an AOL thing that it said to you. You've Got Mail. So it's... Sleepless in Seattle was 1993. Mm. Yeah. Okay, this is a radio talk show that they called in. That's what it was. You've Got Mail, 1998. Interesting. So 93, Sleepless in Seattle was radio, so that was before AOL. Yeah, that was before AOL. So 98 was essentially... You've Got Mail was like right when... Four years into the internet invasion... Yeah, in our culture, that was right? probably AOL number five point A really confusing yeah. time. I still know people, like old people, who they their perception of who AOL is and what they do is all confused. Like old people, well, you know what I mean. Like, I don't want to call anybody out, but you know, <laughs> like AOL was a service provider. They had a browser, right? At one time, like you would get a disc that comes along with your service. You sign up and you get a CD that you have to put in and install. Their software. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so then they and then they essentially became a media company, which is what they are now. They have they own some tech sites. That's the reason I'm familiar. And they have, of course, their own website. But does anybody still use AOL as a website? That's what I. That's what I was do, wondering. I yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah, I think a lot of people still actually use AOL. Bobcat Goldwait. He sent me a fucking AOL email address. <laughs> there you go. I was like, no way. <laughs> They're still out there. He's like, I'm old school. Back in the day, it was awesome. And the member direct- directory search got me a leg. You used to be able to just type in your address, and it would find anybody who had AOL around you based oh, on your, your miles. And I found out like girls that lived down the street from me, and then I started hooking shit. up with them. They, so I just, they, they could probably laid. fucking sue them for Super that. Super stalker. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what internet privacy back then does not no, exist. No, one, no one, one knew what the fuck was going on. You could just send on. them a message. And I used to, like, you know, anyone could get a message to anyone. So, like, if your mom was on AOL and she had an account, like, some Somebody, a stranger, could just be like, hey, lady, you want to fuck? And no one, uh, isn't it funny that, like, given the option, like, message boards and AOL, given the option to use your actual name, like, I have a message board, and my message board has shit. We'll look at it right now. I want to say, like, at least 10 million posts. How many millions? Okay, Whoa. 7 million posts in the main forum. Whoa. Uh, half a million posts in the uh, podcast forum. That's Combat a- Sports Forum is 697,000. The Cunt Farm is 1,700,000. That's the uh, OG yeah. message board right there. So it's been around a long fucking time. There's a, a lot of posts on it. But, like, the actual number of people that use a real name, it's almost none. Oh, it's, on a message board, definitely. Yeah. yeah, given the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I use my real name, but if I'll go through the, the podcast forum or the any of the forum, it's all crazy names. Right. Shazam, Biz, uh, Wally Ryder, Derpa. I mean, everyone's got these wacky King Phoenix. That's not your name, people motherfucker. Used to, people you know? used to do that with email, too. So how many yeah. How many do you think, I got the number here, uh, still use AOL? <sighs> Per year. As a service provider? As a service. They pay for a service. Okay. I would say... I'm going to say 4 million. Okay. What would you think? This is a, obviously a U.S. number. It's only okay. in yeah. America. How many people are currently subscribers to the internet through AOL? You said 4 million? I said 4. And to think, there's probably nothing really to subscribe to anymore. It's just AOL still charging them. Yeah, I, I, I gotta think it's. I gotta feel like it's less than I don't know, two million. I gotta feel like I'm underestimating. I feel like if I had to do they it were again, huge. I would say ten. Okay, go. Do you want ten? I'll say I'll take ten. Take ten. Okay, it's two point five million. Oh, Shit, pretty close. I got greedy. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing that it's two. Yeah, no, two and a half yeah. million. So it's still a lot of people. What was it in its heyday? It's a good uh, question. I don't know. I remember. 
wait a minute, what was that merger? It was Time and AOL. Time Media and AOL, right? Yeah. That was like the epitome of the dot com fallout, like that acquisition where they val- they valued AOL at some enormous figure. I think I'm right about that. I'm, I'm talking then, about a lot of things today, Worms. <laughs> well, <laughs> they, you know. Welcome to the podcast. I got AOL now. It's just that's AOL. Huh? Yeah, you could just do all the. It's just a, a news site similar to Yahoo. Wow, yeah. it looks so weird. Yeah, yeah that's weird. It looks so odd. Yep. And see, there's an example. Remember how we were talking about traditional media before? There's an example of a company essentially losing its foothold in an incredibly short span of time where they were the way to get on the internet and then a decade later, they're a news site. Yeah. Whoa, wait a minute. And they started buying up, you know, media properties, websites that are successful, et cetera, trying to get back into the game in some way. But that's a that's another that's an example of how how the acceleration is happening now where adaptation is more necessary than ever you can never rest on what you're currently doing you always have to be moving on to the next thing because or you're or you turn into well yeah and there's also going to be times where whatever you used to do just doesn't exist anymore yep it's going to go away yep. like if if Blockbuster tried to stay open in some way, shape, or form, it wouldn't have made it. Never. Nobody needs that anymore. <laughs> no. it, so it went away. No. You know, there's going to be a lot of those kind of things when things turn digital. Like record stores, are, they still exist, but it's because records have become kind of cool. Yeah. Like an actual record. It'll always, it'll be there in some format, but it, it just won't be the status quo. Like comic book stores. Yeah. Like, comic book stores are cool because to have a physical copy of Spider-Man 1 is pretty dope. But right. you know what? You can get that Marvel has an app that you can get on your iPad. Right. And you watch comic books on an iPad Com- are better. Uh, Comixology? It's Ma- Marvel. I think it's Marvel. Oh, Marvel has one. There's yeah. also another really big one I think is called Comixology or something like that. They but were recently purchased by Amazon. Anyway. I'm sorry. It's the best way to yep. look at comic books because you flip frame by frame, mm. so you don't have spoilers. Like you know, sometimes you'd be reading a comic book and you see the next page. Yeah, you see the explosion that's in the next page, and you, you right. go, "Oh, damn, that's going to happen." It's actually better. What's well, it is better because mm. you're literally going frame by frame. Every frame is in a unique and frame. And when you put it down and pick it back up, you're right where you left yeah. off. Yeah, dude. W- reading comic books and also. It's not like a limited edition. You can't get it. They could reproduce every goddamn comic book that ever existed in a digital form, and they'd be fools not to. Yeah, and they could do like Netflix, like subscription packages where you just read all you can. Yeah. You know, not actually have to buy them as one if you're willing to pay a monthly fee or something like that. Yeah, and it would make it accessible to the average fan and... The the real big wig sort of comic book collectors that are willing to pay well, I mean, how much is Spider Man one co- worth? Oh, I have no idea. It's probably that's insane an interesting amounts search. of money, yeah. right? Spider Man one insane amounts of money. million bucks. I don't know something crazy like that. Most people are not going to have it, but yeah. you could easily get it if you're a regular kid who had an iPad. Mm. Like they could just upload it digitally, right. and it'd be great. Yeah, no problem. You know? And it would make things... There's this fear, though. There's this fear, though, that it brings down... It has the potential to bring down the overall economic value of the of that independent marketplace, where if people aren't going out and spending $8 per, you know, per uh, comic, then overall there might be less money there, less incentive to get into it, less... Like, this is, this is the music business's argument, right, about independent stuff. So, I don't think that that makes any sense, though, because I think that... You're just going to make people more excited. You're, you're dealing with 350 yeah. million people in this country alone. Right. You're getting more access to the comic book, and I think it's going to make them more excited about it. The physical copy is still going to be worth a massive amount of money. I don't think it undervalues it at all. I think, in fact, it probably makes it more exciting to actually the, hold the copy of it. Right, but there, but there will be fewer comic book stores than there were before. Will there be? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how many Because I think that people exist. still love to have the physical thing in front of them. Yeah, I do too. I don't know. I think it's a mix. If you look at, like, well, it, for example, movies, could you sustain a big budget, Michael Bay? How much money does, does he spend on Transformers? <laughs> if people aren't going to go to the movie theater and spend $15 and another 10 on popcorn, is Michael Bay able to make his movies anymore? Yeah. He is? Yeah. At the same budget? You buy them online. Right, but 
That's what I mean is the consumption medium, once you're online, your expectation is that it's not going to cost you as much as it costs you at the theater. It's the context of the theater that pulls that money out of your pocket. The highest number Spider-Man 1 has generated is this for the, the grade. You know, they grade them from yeah, of uh, course. 0. 0.5, which is a complete magazine. 1.0, which is very poor. 0. 0.5 is fetched as much as $1,600 for a complete, shitty, torn-apart Spider-Man. Wow. For the highest grade, for a perfect copy, one point one million. I was close on that estimate yep, too. You're dead on, and that's a uh, amazing fantasy. It's only the um, that is the original Spider-Man. Amazing fantasy had uh, Spider-Man on the cover, and it was the very first time that we were introduced to Spider-Man. It's only the third comic book to break one million dollar. The other two are Action Comics number one and Detective Comics number twenty-seven. Hmm. Amazing. But million, I don't, million I really, bucks for some paper. See, but people, but look at there. It's like the the shitty version of it that's all fucked up is only worth sixteen hundred yeah. bucks. But the best, perfect, crisp, clean. There's a huge gap. Yeah, yeah. I think there's always going to be that. I guarantee, I I completely agree with you that that's always going to exist too. I, I guess the part I'm talking about is just more ma- mass consumption. That if the mass consumption medium was paper that needed to be distributed everywhere, the average cost of consumption for the average user would be higher than it is in a subscription based model. Like Netflix, for example, is eight dollars a month. But what did you spend on rentals before Netflix existed? A lot more. A lot more. Yeah, that's true. That's a good way of looking at it. And also. Um, the amount of comics that are released, like new ones that are digitally released. Right. Like right now, the amount of apps just for viewing comic books is, you know, there's a couple, but it's not like the same. I mean, if you used to be able to go to any grocery store anywhere and there would be an aisle Mm. that had comic books, Mm -hmm. there would be like a thing that spun around, that little rack that had comic books on it. Yep. Like that slowly is going to be digital. Yeah. So it's kind of like our our Amazon conversation from earlier where – streamlining the delivery method inevitably cuts money mm. from from that transaction yeah, cuts money kinda, it kind of does i guess but you can't think that way. no 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 I, i'm you, not right? supporting that no, I'm i just, know you know yeah i'm just saying that that's the counter argument in all this stuff and probably the better analogy is the michael bay one is this idea that the traditional model as fucked up as it is and maybe the most original ideas aren't getting out it generates a fuck ton of money yeah it's interesting but it's an inevitable part of innovation, like the horseshoe maker of the 1800s was probably so pissed when cars <laughs> came along. Yeah, yeah, He's definitely. like, I bought this fucking house with horseshoes. Like, my whole, my, my kingdom is from horseshoes. I'd like to see his reaction. He's probably so <laughs> mad, you know? Guy's probably going ape shit right now. You don't need a fucking car, okay? Hey, it's not that expensive. All of a sudden he became Jerry Seinfeld. I don't know. What was that? <laughs> well, to live with hope. Why do you need hay? He strikes me as a horseshoe kind of guy. Uh, he's a car guy. Yeah. He's the opposite of a horseshoe no, guy. No, that's true. He's got like a million cars. Right, but he's got old ones. Yeah, his but thing is old, old ones, Porsches. Right? That's his main thing, though. Porsches is his main thing. Yeah. Porsche 911s. He's got like some ungodly number of Porsche 911s. Who's got better cars overall, him or Leno? Leno. Wow, you, Leno did, has you did not cars. hesitate Yeah, on Leno's that. a gangster. He has a full-time staff that takes care of his cars. They're in a warehouse. Jeez. He he has Air an hanger. online show. Yeah, he's got some giant Jeez. place. Like airport. Wow. He also has a um a show, a web show that he does, like all based on cars, hmm. breaking down cars. Seinfeld has that cars and coffee show. I've he's watched just, it. He's pretty close. It's a close second. His show is more. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit about the car, but more about hanging out with unique individuals. I don't mind that show. No, it's not no. bad. It, so, you think about a traditional media guy from ninety the nineties. I think it's a decent transition. It's yeah. definitely better than that marriage ref thing, whatever that was on TV. That was dog shit. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't fix marriages. Who the fuck told you <laughs> you could fix marriages? <laughs> this is how you fix them. You break them. <laughs> you, you break them and you tell the people to get, get your shit together and meet somebody yeah. else and yeah. don't let this happen again. Yeah, <laughs> don't basically. let it get to the point where you're on TV working out your grievances, <laughs> sniping at each other in front of America. Like, but his his, his coffee sh- uh, car comedians in cars or whatever, it kind of has like a podcast vibe to it a little bit. Very much so. It's probably edited a little too much for my taste, but... Otherwise, I feel like you're sort of getting an uncensored version of both individuals. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And it's also a, a passion uh, project, whereas he doesn't need any money. Exactly. He probably doesn't make much from it. Needs... Although they're still getting those Acura ads in there. They are, sure. They're nice and smooth, too. Yeah, yeah. they're good ads. Yeah. Um, he's good at it. 
like, he's good at the show. He's, he really loves cars, but that's what's why it's a passion yeah. project. Like he's he really is a guy. Like he was driving a 1973 Porsche 911 RS, which is a very rare car. It's worth a million dollars. Yeah, and he was driving it around with someone. Uh, I forget who it was. It was in the car with him. But uh, I think it's the guy who hosts Seth Meyers. Is that his name? Yeah, that guy. I think it was him. One of those, some comedian character, whoever it was. Sure. And, you know, you could tell as he's describing the car. Like, these are Jerry's words. He's a real car nut. Mm. This is a really, there's such a difference between that and someone who is just doing that Fake gig. Him. Like, there's plenty of those guys online that are doing the car gig because they could have been a weathercaster or they could have been... Journalism school. Yeah, yeah, not even that. I mean, yeah. they could have been a fucking top 40 DJ or something. <laughs> right. But instead, they're reviewing cars. This is the oh, new automatic God. transition. Transmission. Mm. It's a seven-speed dual-clutch setup. Yeah. There's a difference between that and, like, Matt Farah, who's a friend of mine yeah, who yeah, has yeah, a yeah. show called Drive. And yeah. He's on that and Pretty much if, if you've got a script and a teleprompter, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, and that's the thing about, like, if you can pursue your interests, you'll never work a day in your life. If you yeah, can actually right. find a job where you're doing what you love, unless it becomes a burden, which also you can fuck up. True. You can fuck up, and the thing that you love can become your, you know, it's like marrying your mistress. You know, yeah. That, 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 At least you're still doing it your way and fucking up your way. Yeah. You know, that's, it's still, it's so different than having somebody else tell you what's right and wrong. To experience it yourself. Like, like, sort of like the bicycle thing. Someone can tell you you can, you're going to fall, but it's you're never going to learn as fast as experiencing the failure and 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 uh, iterating based on it. You know, that's something that I think makes like YouTube, for example, so great is that the content producer themselves is keeping track of so many different. We're producers, we're create, we're content creators, writers, whatever, whatever, wearing all these different hats. So you get to essentially see. Uh, so many different perspectives on on the the output what what eventually becomes the video and that job used to take uh, the f that's a super common question I get when people when I talk to people is you do this you mean you do all that on your own all of it like where where's the what about the camera guy what about this guy mm -hmm. what about that guy etc and uh, but there is some level of control and creativity and imagination that can come free when you know how to do everything. Mm. You know what I mean? When there, there aren't, you aren't seeing physical barriers everywhere. You're like, I know how to do that. Well, you're also seeing you in an undirected atmosphere. Exactly. It's really you. And you're an interesting guy. You're a passionate guy about all these different things that you're mm. reviewing. So it's, it's, it draws you in. There's no, there's no fakeness to it all. There's no Today, in the, very it, produced it, it, layer. In the back, all of us had ideas, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone was directing everyone else and, yeah. and themselves and the whole thing. And if in a more uh, regimented environment, it just sucks the life out of everything. Well, we were talking about that. If we had a yeah. producer back there that was yeah. calling the shots. With shot. a clipboard. Meanwhile, it was just five guys laughing hysterically. That's right. And, just like, and trying to make the best video, too. Like and Everybody's idea was clearly about trying to, like, maybe we could get this shot. What about that? Maybe we could do that or this. And it became like we were ramping it up and escalating it to make it better. And I feel like, I feel like that's what exposes the traditional media model in the sense that like if we're having fun it's going to come through mm. coming back to the social media kind of element we're, we're these guys friends we need to get as close to the experience of having them there here as we can for them to get the most out of the video yeah and every every time you put this business person or whoever in between that communication spectrum all of a sudden there's this filter and Audiences are more sophisticated than ever. And that's why I feel like YouTube is the place, it's the ultimate battleground because everybody has equal access to viewership. Mm -hmm. And so you can come with your big budget and you can come with your fancy voice, the one you were doing there. The you, fancy voice. You can come with your million dollars, in fact. Bring A it. A million dollars. Bring it. Bring it and the organic shit will win. In fact, mm. in fact, a couple of years ago, maybe a couple of years ago, Google thought we need more premium content on YouTube. So they ha they launched this premium content initiative, spent an enormous amount of money, like a hundred million dollars, to convince traditional media people to bring their content to YouTube. Almost everything within that initi uh, initiative bombed. 
Wow, Fucking because it wasn't bunk. passion based. Because it wasn't passion based and it wasn't organic to the platform. Mm. It was this really weird kind of Frankenstein version of it, you know? And I you know, I'm 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 really passionate about it. I'm really passionate about people that are web native remaining that way, you know, and a fat paycheck not necessarily changing that. Yeah, I don't think it would change that for you. You 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 really do enjoy it and love it and the only thing that would change is if it became a burden you know if it became you were beholden to another company you were yeah. beholden to yep. if you had sony sponsors unblocked you know i mean <laughs> yeah. imagine if sony sponsored unbox therapy or it, well dude it i mean it's not it's not impossible that at kind, all i mean on the web there's this advertising is the web and no one wants to talk about that you know people want to run ad block and pretend that it doesn't exist every site you love every video you love Everything important and interesting on the web or the or a lot of it, the vast majority of it, is supported by the fact that brands are paying to be in your face. Google exists because they're an advertising company, first and foremost. That's how they keep the doors open. Right. But there's this really weird thing where people, you know, ha haters, whoever, people want to come on there and pretend that it's actually something else they're participating in. But if it wasn't for advertising and real money finding its way to the web, none of us would be here right now. Mm. You need it. You need it to survive, and you need it to invest back in the content. I'm out here in L.A. right now shooting fucking arrows. It's not free. <laughs> I got a $10,000 camera back there. It's not free. If you want to see cool shit, it's going to cost you. But at least in this environment, you know it's spent on the actual thing and not spent on some woman walking around with a clipboard. Right. Well, I've been to certain YouTube shows that are super overproduced. Yeah. Have you ever seen YouTube shows where they do it like a Hollywood show where they have makeup yep. artists and yep. uh, producers and directors? Uh, there's a there's a guy that's holding the camera and there's another guy directing it mm -hmm. and there's someone who's overviewing the thing. Yep. I've seen like six, seven people. I've been, I've been on the same sets, man. And What it, is that? That's the blockbuster effect. So those, what, that, those are the traditional people taking the easiest path to secure their position. Without being imaginative. It's also people that think that you have to do that in order to be legit. You have to have all those roles. That's right. If yeah, if there's not... <laughs> t today we had probably five people holding cameras. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not Everybody. Be not because it was their job, but because it was exciting to try and get an interesting frame themselves. Yeah. You know, we wasted everybody on the actual subject matter instead of having somebody putting powder on our faces. And there was also, there wasn't, the, the, the voice of reason didn't exist. No. You know, there, there was no. no one person that was no. like saying, say, look, look, we can't do that. That's yeah. too far. I, We're going to lose our sponsors. We're going to. Exactly. I think once you've had the real version, once you've had the uncensored version once you've had you on the podcast or you've had me in my show it's really hard to ingest us in another format you know yeah it's well it'd be really hard if it, it's, it'd be really hard to recreate that too like to recreate someone who's really interested in what they're talking about really mm -hmm. passionate about it's i don't think you can recreate it you either into it or you're not yeah you can't fake that yep. it comes through you know that's a big issue in mixed martial arts too. In big in mixed martial arts, um, they there was a bunch of those sort of sports guys that got into mixed martial arts and were doing commentary on it, but really didn't know what the fuck oh, they were talking about. Right. But they were more sports, and they would say like ridiculous shit, and the hardcore fans would go crazy. Mm -hmm. They'd go after them. <laughs> They're like, you're not really a fan, you fucking Problem. weird faker guy who doesn't yeah. even understand what you're talking about, and. It just shone through. And then there's other guys that do it that they, they clearly love it. And those are the ones that are usually embraced for the most part. The, pro the only problem from a business perspective is when the guy, if the guy you're employing knows more about the thing than you do, who's really in the power position? Right. You see, there's something really enticing about putting a puppet in. It's true. Yeah. And or... Putting an expert in who will do your bidding. Putting, putting it. Yeah, exactly. An expert the way you see it. A well compensated expert that knows <laughs> how to be a company man. An expert actor. Yeah, and it, when it comes to electronics and things, that's when it gets really squirrely because if Sony knows that you've been beholding to LG and they try to lure you from the LG side, yep. and then and then LG finds out that you, wow, you fucking went over to Sony, huh? You goddamn turncoat, like. <laughs> You, you've already, Relationships yeah. and the whole fucking thing, yeah. How does that work? Like, when you get stuff, like, mm -hmm. I know Top Gear. Okay, you know that show Top Gear from the love, BBC? Love the show Great Top show, Gear. Yeah. great show. Well, they had a problem with American 
uh, would do it on doing it in America mm. because they shit on some cars. I mean, they Jeremy Clarkson takes open dumps on yeah, some cars definitely. and Porsches like for years and years until like the 997 Turbo was the first Porsche he praised. Right, he would shit on them how <laughs> stupid they were and they were basically overgrown beetles and like. I mean, it would constantly do that, and because of that, like a lot of American car companies didn't want to donate their cars to them, mm. and they had a real issue doing yeah. that show on American TV. We kind of dipped into that in the last conversation about how when your subject matter comes from a company, mm-hmm. like if you know, if you want to go shoot a rom com movie, the subject matter is the, are the actors that you hire, but in this case, this these are our actors. These are the this is what makes the video or breaks the video. I mean, I can sit there and talk about what I've heard all I want, but mm-hmm. without it in my hands, I have no interpretation to share with you. So it's a very big deal maintaining these relationships and making sure that you're going to get your hands on the stuff. And therefore, it is important what people say and how they say it. And so this is – I was ranting last show on tech journalism, and somebody had a really – good point in the YouTube comments about journalism in general. They're like, wait a minute, think about politics, think about commercials on CNN, think about the agenda of anybody trying to get a message out there. If you can shroud it under the heading of journalism, it's going to get past the filtration system that much easier. See, it's the best advertising, real advertising, is stuff you don't even know is there. Ooh. Like we just said, <laughs> product placement. I remember when I first found out about product mm. placement. I think it was on news radio. They would. Uh, there's two. There's different types of product placement. One, there's free product. Mm. That they just give you free product, and so you you drink their sodas on the set, and you wear their clothes. Like Nike will give you free sneakers if you're on a television show. Like things along those lines. So there's that kind, and then there's also like where you are supposed to be holding up a Coca-Cola <laughs> while you're in the, the like, man, we've got to find this fucking killer before he kills again. <laughs> <sighs> it's refreshing. It's really helped me fight crime. You know, there, that's like the low, the low fi version. That's, that's like the unsophisticated version of it. But that unsophisticated version mm-hmm. rears its ugly head pretty often, sometimes offensively. Yeah, on cable TV. And the internet, yeah, the internet will yeah. react. The like, internet oh, won't put up with that shit, man. product placement, you fuckheads. The internet won't put up with that shit. And, and ultimately, I don't think it functions in nearly as well. I Here's the thing. I always get pissed off when I'm watching a movie or something, and they've completely covered up the logos on everything. Mm. Because watching that movie for me is all about the suspension of disbelief. I, right. I have to believe that what I'm looking at is potentially possible like if it's an apple laptop but the apple part is blurred out Uh, every reality show ever is that as bad as when it's a sony show and everyone's got a sony i was watching a movie the other day (laughs) where everyone had sony everything sony vio laptops the worst right now is music videos music videos is no longer a viable business to invest that much money in a video and all you're going to get is a little bit of ad revenue off youtube so they're all supported heavily by Product placement, you'll see Beats Audio, you'll see right. special phones, and like super heavy duty in the frame, you know? Mm-hmm. But for me, if we can all agree that the audience is, themselves is becoming more sophisticated, we need to get better at hiding the Easter eggs in our entertainment because you're going to fuck up my suspension of disbelief. Yeah, using them so blatantly, ob- like, I, like I said with this movie I saw the other day, the, every time they took a photograph, it was a Sony camera. Every time... Yep. What fucking movie was it? God damn it. Yeah, you need to call this out right now. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what movie it is. I just saw it. Yeah, well, here's the problem with the blatant call out is that all of a sudden, as a consumer, your guard is up. We, right? We are bombarded with brand messages on a daily basis. And so because of it, we build up this force field, right? That, I don't know. I don't remember what the figure is. You're inundated with thousands of brand messages before you even get to work in the morning type thing. Yeah. And so your guard is up, and so it doesn't pass into that other portion of you, that subconscious portion of your mind that controls your purchasing decisions. So not only are you fucking up my entertainment by not allowing for the suspension of disbelief, but you're not also you're also not selling me your product because I saw what you did there. Right. Yeah. And if I do buy it, like I'm buying it in spite of what you did. Because exactly. And like it's so good, I'll buy it anyway. But God, you idiots! Oh, deliver us from evil. That's what it was. What's it about? Oh, it's a silly fucking movie. It's supposedly it's an Eric Bana movie. 
It's based on um, uh, the real life instances of a New York City police detective <laughs> who had a, a serious thing where a guy was possessed. Like, get the fuck out of here! It's so ridiculous. So, but and that had product placement. Yep. Interesting. Really blatantly obvious product placement. <sighs> It was pretty silly. Yeah. Like, so much so. Like, every time they use the phone, you got to see the Sony logo clearly in place. And that's a... That, the, see, brands themselves, the people making those calls, they're the wrong fucking people. They're yeah. the wrong people. They, they're just some meeting somewhere, and, and they're going, okay, we can have the phone in for three frames or eight frames. It and pulls go, well, you out we'll, of the we'll, we'll take eight frames because we want as much of this as we can get. Well, it's not a question of quantity. It's not. Right. You just got to plant the seed, man. Well, if you, you're teaching them how to be fuckheads, I don't think you should do I don't, that. <laughs> but I don't think that's fuckhead at all because my life experience, I don't care about advert. Like, I I personally think good advertising is one of the most sophisticated art forms that exists. Right. I have enormous respect for good advertising. The like, problem with advertising, it, it's context. Like, for example, uh, women, they, they're going to read Vogue, Vogue magazine, right? Vogue magazine is as much about the people they choose to let advertise in there as it is about anything they write on their own. Mm. It's all about context. The I, experience of picking it up, going through the pages, finding things that are attractive, and what's know, pulling you in. And knowing that for 3 or $4, you are now, you are now uh, sh- uh, completely consumed in the culture of all this really expensive stuff and these really expensive brands, and it's all connected. See, their narrative, the narrative on Vogue magazine is not about what they're putting into it. It's about who else is there, who's at the party. Gucci's there, Louis Vuitton is there, etc. Mm-hmm. It's about building that entire thing up. And for the male perspective, DuPont Registry, even better example. Perfect. DuPont Registry is an ad book. That's right. You're buying an ad book. Mm-hmm. Everything in that magazine is an advertisement. And we like Everything, it. and we love it. And it's there at every fucking newsstand. You see a DuPont Registry, and it's got some new car on that costs way too much fucking money for 99.999% of the people that ever buy that magazine to afford. That's right. Probably more than that. Like the Bugatti Veyron, a million five, <sighs> and it's on the cover. And you're like, what? Who's this magazine for? Yeah, it's yeah, an yeah. ad for a car that costs more than most people's fucking houses. What else is the Rob Report? Yes, yeah. that's another one. Yeah. yeah, all the Rob Report is everything though. It's like boats yachts and planes, yeah, 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 and yeah, vacation yeah. homes in Hawaii, and all this crazy shit. But, but that's the thing is like, ultimately, people want to be told what to get. You know, we don't have the time. It's the reason that channels like mine exist. You don't have the. There are so many – the product sphere is so huge now mm-hmm. that keeping tabs on all of it is very difficult to do. And in some ways, we're reverting back to the informational type of advertising that existed in previous times. You know, you break the show and the guy comes out and he goes, I'm, I got the new Colgate toothpaste. And the host of the show is actually showing you what it is and what it does. Right. See, advertising has moved so far in the abstract direction. Right where it's like you're advertising for beer, but everyone's partying all the fucking time. It's like, what am I buying? I'm you know? buying a party. I'm buying a party in a bottle. Right. I'm buying. A, I'm hanging out with these guys, that's, Lou. That's their dream come true. The problem is beer is not representative of the massive sphere that we have to purchase within. We need to buy complicated shit too. Right. And you can't just tell me my life's better because I have it. Well, I need. I need evidence, man. Yeah, that's the the place where you come in, and then Marcus, um, anybody who. That's how you say his name, Marquez. Marquez. I say Marquez. He will doesn't care if he's Marcus or Marquez. Um, or if if you, we want to shout out his channel, it's MKBHD. Awesome reviews. Yeah. Awesome reviews. But the the kind of in depth coverage of electronics d- just did not exist, even on like the screensavers. Even no. on they just couldn't. There's no way you can. No, no one has that time. No. And it's, it highlights the issues that people have with traditional media. You know, it highlights the issues that people have with having a very specific time where you have to tune into something. It's true. That's, that was a, that's a huge barrier to creativity. Oh, it's a yeah. mess. Because you have to build this messaging that's suitable for this huge amount of people at one time. Like, you know, the Super Bowl, right? You spend a million dollars for a commercial because everybody's paying attention at that time. But it's not targeted at all. Right. You're not reaching anybody specifically. I mean, maybe more dudes are watching it than women. Though I was amazed at the female figures. There's a lot of women watching it too. Everyone in the house is watching it. But ultimately, is 
part of it is the shotgun approach. Part, part of it is just getting the name of your goddamn thing to as many people as possible. But I think real decision making happens at a, at a much deeper level. Personally, that's my feeling. So awareness is point A, but uh, in, in, knowledge is, is the next step. So fine, make your introduction at the Super Bowl, but that's not enough. You can't stop there. Yeah, and I think that also the kind of advertise like the difference between advertising and informative entertainment, which is essentially what you're doing. I mean, you when when you're what doing I'm, your what things, I'm doing, yeah, but but brands are trying to do what I do now. Like Samsung will do their own unboxing videos. Really? Hell yes. And who does it for them? <sighs> Some random Fucking employee. Scrubs. <laughs> yeah. You. No, seriously. What? It, so it's not you, someone if who's you passionate. Want, you want a major mind blow? Look, look one up later. Look up the. I believe it was the S five or the Note three. Uh, a Korean girl did it for yeah. them. You know? not good. Not it's, a good job. It's the whole thing. Fluff piece. It feels the whole thing feels so bizarre. Again, <laughs> again, you're hitting that. You're hitting that force field. You're hitting right. that sensor. People are alerted. You know, we're all. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about it. I love that sophisticated advertising, or not sophisticated, I don't even know if it's just advertising, but sophisticated content drives a more sophisticated viewer. I love that. Mm. That all these people out there that experience my content now are going to hold everything else up to that standard. Right. You see? Yeah. So you can you are literally pushing the entire market pl- marketplace by not fitting within a particular paradigm. That's so interesting, man. And it's also kind of redefining how we view the information that we get on on each product. Like it used to be the only information that you got about a new Chevy truck was either reading about it in a magazine because you, you're so intrigued that you pick up a Chevy truck magazine or you'd get an ad. You'd see an ad yeah. for a Chevy truck. Yeah. Now you go online and you t- Chevy truck Everyone review. Does. Everyone Boom. does. And there's so many reviews for I've been looking at a, a new SUV. My my lease is up on my SUV. I'm right. thinking about something else to get or a truck or whatever. Cool. And I'm reading all these different reviews, and you get lost, man. Mm-hmm. It's almost an overload because you like look up the Toyota Land Cruiser. You, okay, the Land Cruiser. You binge. Ooh, you binge Land on it. Cruiser. You binge on it. How much time did you spend? Oh, lots of hours. How, how much time will you put into this purchase? Uh, quite a bit, more than anything else, because it's my the family vehicle. Mm-hmm. So it's I want to make sure they're safe yeah. and they're big and yeah. they can carry all our shit if we're going right. anywhere. Seats fold in a million uh-huh. different ways. That's big, yeah. you know. Entertainment thing. Yep. So the, I have a four year old and a six year old. Yep. They get their little party on the back seat and everything's <laughs> groovy. iPhone connection. Got to oh, look at those. those everybody new ones. Has activity. That, or no, much. the new one. The uh, what's the thing called? That's uh, CarPlay. CarPlay. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. that? Well, that's what. That's what. That's well. We sort of had that conversation about Google. They're doing their own version, but Apple has their in car in car software, and they have a, a few automak- automakers they've aligned with to put essentially an iPhone experience in your dash, so you no longer have that dumb unit. You know what they're doing also for a lot of back seats? Mm. They have this thing where you lock in an iPad. Oh and right! And the just, kids watch. Just fuck it! Just paste it right in there. The kids watch their iPad, and they also have games that they can play on it. Of and they also have their own individual ear jack. Oh, definitely. And so, or they That's can awesome. go Bluetooth within the device. So they have Way wireless better. headphones. You know, mommy and daddy don't have to listen to the fucking s- Frozen for the hundredth time. <laughs> That's the thing about kids, man. It's cute. It's adorable. But once they love something, they just want to watch it over and mm. over and mm. over and over and over. I went through Tangled. I went through a period of watching Tangled. Hmm, I probably saw it a hundred times. Probably Whoa. Saw, probably Mine saw don't do that yet. No? No. Mine are American. They're different <laughs> than yours. My kids are different. They have different DNA. No, they're not. But, like, they're different. What, you want to know mine? My two-year-old, especially, you got to remember they've had like they've had all the technology, all the video games since day one. So no Waldorf school for your kids. <laughs> Fuck no. Do you know about Waldorf school? They I, make you play with wooden toys. I had a friend who went there. Yeah. No electronics. Yep. Yeah. No. No. None they of make that. Nice kids. Mm, well, that's subjective. <laughs> nice is a subjective word. Right. I uh, agree. Um, but no. Listen, I'm immersed in it. I want to connect with them. How am I? In fact, Will's been in a bunch of my videos, my four-year-old lately, uh, which is amazing because half of this shit he sees it come in the house, you know, and and he doesn't get to participate in that part of it. So I think I have the in that sense I have the coolest job that I get to do shit with him. But um, 
and most of the, and every time it's him driving it not me so for the audience it's like you're exploiting him or whatever this is him nagging me weeks on end let's make another video four years <laughs> he old he likes it he loves it he that's funny loves it but they're so into this world that uh like youtube for example they full, give them an ipad they know how to navigate youtube and the, the craziest part and I and I've talked about this before as well. Is like the consumption thing that I'm in, like the product world, the the tech world. It exists for different spectrums too, like makeup and beauty and kids shit. My, they research their toys, man. They yeah. they research the stuff they want. Yeah. So they're watching Play-Doh sets. They're watching car sets. They're watching Lego, Lego, man. So they're getting started even earlier than me. Not only that, those toys get reviewed now. That's right. The star rating system. That's right. Like if you go to Amazon and you look up children's toys, you'll see a rating system and comments that the mm-hmm. parents and the children will even like tell the parents what they like or don't like about a toy, and the parents talk about like That's the right. build quality. That's right. Which you used to, you know, you used to have to like read consumer reports or find oh, out about right. if it was even safe or yeah. there's like dangerous yeah. toys that broke and stabbed you and you felt, oh, uh, the high chairs, recall mm. a fucking high chair because people mm. are falling over or yeah. whatever. Now all that shit's out in the open. It's amazing. See, but here's the thing is like if, if the blockbuster guys are on one end of the spectrum, poor fucking blockbuster guys, I keep on calling them out. They still exist. Those are real guys. They're listening right now. Probably not. Poor bastards. Anyway, dead. if the blockbuster guys are on one end of the spectrum and my kids are on the other, because I'm already completely sensitized to the traditional media messaging, like it's not going to fucking work on me. It sure as fuck isn't going to work on them. Yeah. They know how to get around it. Not only that, they're from the jump. How old are you? 29. I'm 46. Right. So obviously I dealt with a lot of years where there was no influence whatsoever exactly. by the common person with social media and the ability to spread information. Like a guy like you didn't exist no. when I was young. My job didn't exist when I was in high school. My guidance counselor yeah. couldn't have told me what the fuck I was going to be doing because YouTube wasn't even a thing. He probably wouldn't have told you to do it anyway. <laughs> even today, a guide, what guidance counselor is going to tell you, hey, man, you should make some YouTube videos. That's your I move. get that question more than anything else from young people. How do I do what you do? It's the number one question. Just start doing it, right? That's it. I mean, th- th- those people that are asking that question, you guys I are know. knuckleheads. Yeah. Stop with the questions. Just go do something. <laughs> That's the problem with people. They yeah. like to talk about shit so True. much they don't actually do shit. I've been reading Stephen King's book on writing, which is a great book. I was reading it this weekend. And um, one of the great things about the book is he says, like, you can only talk about writing so much. Like, you should just go write. Just get it done. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of times people, and this is also in Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art. A lot of times people will distract themselves from the actual work at hand by talking about it. Mm-hmm. So, Definitely. You know. No, I, I mean, I completely feel that way. In fact, in my studio, I tried to ma- create it in such a fashion where the friction between me starting something and not starting something is at the lowest level possible. You've done the same thing here, obviously. I mean, Jesus, you just sit down and go. Yeah. You know, and that's the key because human beings, we will naturally find ways out of doing yes. what we know we're supposed to be doing. But this is easy to do. This is like, out of all the things that I do that require me to do it, whether it's writing being the most difficult, stand-up being the least difficult, this is the easiest. Stand-up being the least difficult? Oh, oh. To get me to do? Oh, okay. I, I love doing stand-up. Right, it's right. It's really fun. Right. You know, it's probably the most difficult to get right. This is probably the easiest out of all the things that I do I to know. get right. I don't know. But out of all the things you, that I do? Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, it might be to you. But I mean, to the average person, I think this format is it, it requires it, a certain openness about yourself because to to do a set, are you rev- are you revealing as much about yourself in a, a comedy set as you are in a three hour conversation? You definitely reveal more in a three hour conversation. I would think. I would think so too. You can, especially when you do five hundred of them. That's what people, I'm saying. You know, yeah, yeah. That's kind of get a sense. And and a lot of people I know the barrier that's holding them back in the first place is insecurity about who they are or mm. what they have to share or whether or not anyone gives a fuck. Well, it, that's a much tougher place to put them in this seat where they're expected to show who they are for three hours instead of mastering this really perfect little box, this little thing that represents them. Right. Like, I think uh, I make most of my videos are three to five minutes long. And I think a person could listen to this podcast right here and know more about me than if they watched 
five hundred of them. Oh, most certainly. What's the longest you've ever done a video for? Is there anything that's like really complex that warrants much longer? Uh, you know, you can get up into like ten, fifteen, maybe fifteen. Like, what would be fifteen? Like a new phone or what? something like really complicated? Some kind of comparison, like mm. something versus something else. But you don't like limit yourself, like you. Well, you, there's just. It, it, Listen, if you're you, you have to be smart in anything that you that you do if you're investing a lot of time in it. And so there is definitely a retention issue. We if we're willing to identify the fact that consumption habits are changing and the web is the driving force behind that, then we also need to be cognizant of the fact that we need to fit within a certain fit within certain boundaries. Even though those boundaries are loose and no one's going to fucking tell you one way or the other. A lot of the conversations I have in brainstorming that I do is about hyper-focusing and iterating and finding better ways of reaching people. And we just, I think a lot of us, I'm speaking, I guess, for the community as a whole, have figured out that three to five minutes is just what makes sense. Three to five minutes is a song length as well. Yeah, it's a really weird, it's really weird that it lines up that way. Three minutes is what they say, right? You see, songs? like, something, th yeah, I, I, for sure, something weird uh, we don't have uh, YouTube up there right now, but like if you look at the YouTube interface, it's a lot of thought goes into the way things are laid out. People freak out whenever anything changes, and why the fuck is that there? Google's stupid. People love seeing the shit like that. Yeah, YouTube does a pretty decent job of setting up. Like if you watch, click on one of those videos, Brian. Like one of your videos, you would look on the right and you see get suggested all those stuff. Other th yeah, that's that's what sends you down those fucking rabbit, hole. rabbit holes, man. <laughs> that's where shit gets weird. But here, see, so here's the thing about this frame right now that we're looking at. At what point does this video become less enticing than the juicy shit on the right? Right. You see, he full screened it, so he kind of killed yeah. it. But well, full screening it definitely does. Look full screening it does, right? But why is YouTube not by default a full screen interface? Well, because they're about view times as a whole. Yeah. Did we talk about this last time? Did they? Did we? I don't remember. But that totally makes sense. The way they're designed, I think it's the perfect design. Also, the comments, as inane and retarded and <laughs> yeah. fucking aggravating as they right. can be, they engage people and right. get people to spend more time. There's some folks that just do not have an outlet. And I think that's sometimes reflected in the angry and anger and vitriol yeah. that you see yeah. exhibited on a YouTube page. It's not even representative oftentimes of what they're actually reviewing. It's it's a reflection of their own life. Mm -hmm. Is that people don't feel like they are heard. They don't feel like they matter. They don't feel like they have a voice. And then finally when they do have a voice, like yeah, man. what they're saying is no one wants to fuck me. My boss is an asshole. I picked a shitty career. Yeah. You know, I, I don't like well, I, live. I sort of feel like people within those communities don't get enough recognition, though. So, like, as which communities? So, like, my let's say my best viewers. Let's say your best viewers. Anyone's the like, best. They're all the same to me. Lewis. Get the fuck out of my they're face! They're all right awesome now. people. Get out of my face right now! How dare you? Listen, there are people who are fucking Joe Rogan diehards. Those people matter more to you than the hundred thousands, hundred thousand others that are fair weather type viewers they're evangelists for you they're out there saying to their buddies you fucking hear the podcast go check out the podcast you need to hear this podcast check out this guest he had on so on and so forth don't tell them they're important then they're going to want more attention no 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 what are you doing You're no fucking up everything there's a way that th there's a way this can work there's a way that it can work <sighs> yeah mushrooms everybody's <laughs> got to get on mushrooms together at the same no, time no 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 here's how it works we need to find a way to reward the most important in our own communities. Okay, because here's why. It's not fair that they're out there as evangelists for our brands, and yet they get nothing out of it. What are you talking about? They get the entertainment out of it. That's the whole exchange. That's you fine. give them okay. something other than the entertainment, then it changes no, and that, morphs. That's fine. They get the entertainment out of it, but so does somebody else who shuts the fuck up immediately after they watch it. The part they're doing on their own time is not about the entertainment anymore. Right, but sh don't you do that as well, and don't I do that as well? And do what? But you talk about things that you enjoy, and the, the benefit Fine. of that is that you support the things that you enjoy. Like Game of Thrones, for instance. Yeah, I'm a and big you... evangelist of Game of Thrones. Right. I can't stop talking. They've never paid me. No, 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 I'm not. They wouldn't. Did I say pay? What do you mean by reward? There are ways to recognize without necessarily paying somebody. Like, who's... Let's put it this way. Who's your most engaged Twitter follower? Who do you talk to more than anyone else? 
I don't think I have a one. You probably do. You? do. No, but I don't. I'm saying have we, pro- one we don't have an accurate. We any. don't have an accurate way of figuring out. I would like. Uh, you know what would be interesting to me to know who has tweeted at Joe Rogan more than any other user. You're gonna attract a psycho. <laughs> no, gonna, Lewis, it's me. I am the one. I am Highlander. <laughs> no. Uh, you're essentially sending out a bad signal to crazy people. No, That's what you are. No, 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 I'm not. Calling all crazy people. No, I'm not. Because in the real world, stuff like this has existed for the longest time. Like, like take, for example, a forum. A forum's not in the real world, but it's an older platform. In a, in a forum... <laughs> Game of Thrones sent me a box. <laughs> See, that counts. That fucking counts, by yeah, the way. It's true. Well, they did that, that after I talked about them forever. That fucking counts. They didn't just send it just to me either, by the way. Okay. No, no, I know. Um, and, but, like, what are you talking about? Like, in what, what way would you reward them? So... What do you got planned? In the old days on a forum... A right. forum in the old days? <laughs> <laughs> what, what old days? You ta- Mine's been around <laughs> since 1998. I thought I had the oldest forum on the net. <laughs> or it's one of the oldest. Forums, to me, when I get in a forum, I feel like I'm in the old internet. Okay? And the reason is because social media, to me, has sort of... Uh, sort of absorbed some of what forums used to be for mm-hmm. socializing, <laughs> right? Right. So I ca- kind of look at social networks as like forum 2.0 or whatever, right? But anyway, forums still exist, and, and that's cool. But on a forum, the people who participate like crazy in some forums, they have they have like five stars or something, right? Or they're uh, the uh, reps, a contributor, yeah. a rep, a moderator. Mm-hmm. Mo- like moderators take lots of pride in being moderators, even though they're not getting paid to be moderators. Right. Now, granted, you can have circumstances where things get fucking creepy and weird. That's yeah. g- that's going to happen. That's inevitably going to happen. But for each one of them, there's a hundred cool people who want to participate in your community and just get a little bit of recognition right. for that participation. Like, I really want to know who has tweeted at Unbox Thera- Therapy more than anyone else. I want to know who that person is. Not okay. because not because I want to stalk them, but because I want to find a way to to, to thank them for stalking you. <laughs> See, you're making you're taking the totally negative approach on this. I can't uh, help it; it's right be there. Be optimistic. <laughs> be optimistic. Yeah. Normally, you're the optimistic one, right, on the podcast, and the the person in this seat is the pessimistic one. Not necessarily, I, but I think that w- I agree in in form of what you're saying. Um, but I think that what the the beauty and the purity of the relationship between someone who likes your show and someone who comments on your show, someone who enjoys your show, Here's is that your show gets more recognition, more hits, and it continues to grow. And, and they get better content because of it. And they it. enjoy it. Yeah. They enjoy it. It makes their life interesting. You know, I try as much as possible. Like when I'm, on, if you look at my Twitter, one of the things that uh, is about my Twitter that's important to me is anything that I find that's interesting online, I share. Right. So I'm mean, not everything because yeah. it would Where's be a unbox therapy on that constant feed? stream. <laughs> I put that. Up. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. How dare you? <laughs> but it would be a constant stream of videos and content. Mm-hmm. I can't do. I can't do everything. No. But. Things that I think are fascinating, like um, or important, like uh, I put up something on from Science Magazine about uh, widespread contamination of the marine environment by microplastics, which I think is really a sad and, uh, of course, yeah, you know, reversible but needs to be addressed. Part of our society and mm-hmm. the use of plastics and our relationship with the oceans, things along those lines. Um, mm-hmm. Sexy photos on Facebook may cause women to be seen as less competent. That's from the Science World Report. That's another thing that I tweeted. I believe that. Fascinating, right? Yeah. Interesting. Definitely. So I put a lot of that online. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that is... You're adding value for people. Yeah. Definitely. And I also, agree. It, it gives them an incentive also, selfishly, to tweet me these interesting things so that I retweet them mm-hmm. because I do that all the time too. And followers. And, yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of followers. And yeah. recognition yeah. and people will... You know, people like well, to that's be a perfect, engaged. Well, that's a perfect example. I mean, that's part of the reason that I love Twitter. Yeah. Is that... You, they know you see them, mm-hmm. but see in YouTube comments. I mean, you can reply. It's impossible to reply to everyone, but on Twitter, you see one one guy gets retweeted. You think, well, I could get retweeted at some right. point later. Right. Something that's been a big conversation lately is the favorite button. Mm. Are you a fan of the favorite button? No, it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. People people use it for different reasons. Some people use it to save tweets. Yeah, but that's not the way I I use it at all. I could care less about saving tweets most of the time. I c- could use it that way, but the majority of how I use it is as a recognition piece. So you're cool. 
You sent me some cool shit. I can't retweet it right now, but I see you. But why why can't you retweet it? It's just as easy to press retweet no, as it is to press because, favorite. Because ultimately you need to curate your feed. If you retweet everything everyone sends you, you're fucked. Right. But if you see it's a, someone's it, feed and favorites no, come up. No, so like so what I mean no favorites well, favorites do come up, but it's kind of you have to go there to get it. Right. Meaning if you favorite something, it's not gonna mm-hmm. go on your feed. Right. So uh, favorites are a little tougher to get your hands oh, on. I see what you're saying. So you're letting someone know that you see them, you give them a response by favoriting their tweet, but you don't put it on your feed so they can they know that you see them. Yep. That, that makes sense. Actually, that's the best use of it that I've ever heard. I do it as a bookmark. Where yeah, that's how it was. In, that's that's yeah. what it was intended for. Yeah, that's how I've used it. That's it, the only way I've. I've it's ever intended used as it. a bookmark, and there's this growing group of people. I don't know how many, but when I talk about it on Twitter, a lot of people said they're doing the same thing. It's a movement to try and generate essentially a like button on Twitter mm. where it doesn't exist. Okay, so the favorite becomes a like button. Sort of. I like that. I like that because I can actually use that way more mm-hmm. because the way I use it now, I just, I just don't. I can't. Uh, there's no way I can no, retweet you can't everything man- that comes my or way. Or even see everything that comes your way. No, it's but not possible. It, but if you're sitting on Twitter and somebody takes the effort to, to, like, they thought of you. They saw this cool thing. They thought of you. You hit the star button, and it's like there's an exchange there. Yeah. There's some recognition. It's not a dollar value. But that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Mm. When I'm talking about nurturing a, a community. That makes sense. That totally makes sense. That that um, I I think nurturing a community also comes from being engaged, from mm. you know reading your comments and yeah. maybe commenting on them in another podcast or another uh, video cast, whatever you would like to call it, or um, Twitter. You know, engaging with people as much as possible, answering questions as much as possible. But with me, there's a certain balance of engaging and still getting work done. Like my my thing is all about producing content. Yeah. I produce yeah. hours of a podcast yeah. three days a week most of the time. And then there's the writing of comedy and of random thoughts that, that have to take place. If it doesn't take place, my comedy will suffer. And uh, probably yeah. my conversations that I have on podcasts will suffer. I need to think about ideas by myself as yeah. well as have them in a, a conversation with people. And then there's also the researching of shit, the reading of articles, the watching of documentaries, the reading of magazines or books. The amount of time that's left over to just in- engage with people online is pretty minimal. Mm-hmm. And if you change the balance in any way, all the content that you put out suffers. Right. And I think... It's easy to forget that the content in and of itself is a communication. Yes. Meaning that like it's it's similar to what I said before about the Best Buy thing, how essentially we took a traditional model of this guy in his Best Buy store and we said this is much more dynamic and, and it's much more streamlined to take one guy who really knows and give that to everyone. Well, video is this way of having one message suitable or sent to hundreds, thousands, millions of people, whereas a, a personalized tweet, I'm sorry. If you were to sit there all day and answer every tweet you ever got, you'd never make another thing in your life. Exactly. And ultimately, the reason people care about you in the first place is because of all the cool shit you made. Yeah, there's a balance. Yeah. There's a balance. And it may be, who knows, maybe it's like a weekly ask me anything sort of a thing like they do on Reddit. Like I've done a couple of those Reddit ones. Definitely. It's kind of fun. Some of the guys that we had with us are big proponents of ask me videos as well. Yeah. And you just, you get thousands of questions in on Twitter and you pick a few and address them, it's huge. Yeah, I think that might be a better way to do it even because writing things, like one of the issues that I have with blog entries, and I do enjoy reading people's blogs, but one of the issues that I have is that you, if you give someone a free, you know, a page where it's just an open platform to write things and to write about a subject, they're not opposed you know, it's just their thoughts, and it's a way to express thoughts, but mm-hmm. they might be saying some incorrect incorrect, and not factual shit or distorted sure. shit, and they use that as the base for other statements, and they use that as a base to further expand upon these thoughts that were based almost entirely on something incorrect in the first place or distorted in the first place or biased in the first place. So it creates this piece. Like, say if someone was writing something about you, like a really biased piece about Lewis from Unbox Therapy. Oh, thanks for giving him the idea. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if they did do that, and yeah. a lot of it was based on some incorrect assumptions about you mm-hmm. and some incorrect information or distorted perceptions, it biased probably, perceptions. It probably exists. Sure, I'm sure it does. But 
the, my point being that that's a really bad way to communicate ideas. Yeah, it's yeah. it's good for just trying to shame someone or trying to uh, you know just throw mud on their name, but or to praise someone or to pump someone up and create them you know create some art. But the the best way to express an idea is to have that idea sort of vetted out with another person. Yeah. You know, and that that doesn't really that I that doesn't really happen when you do it in that form. No, yeah, and and another thing too, like well, building on that is the fact that video in and of itself is the closest thing we have to real life. Yes, to actually meeting somebody. Uh, yes, so you can, you know, you can t take all of those things that are happening within communication that aren't necessarily the words themselves, mm -hmm. and you can put th those into the overall sort of scenario and and the line that you're going to draw based on their perspective you guys were talking recently about uh your buddy on twitter who had the radio show and said some stuff and then got mm -hmm. kicked off the radio show anthony, anthony cumia. cumia yeah yeah and you know con how, how context in, in so many ways dictates interpretation so if video is the best right video is this modern form of communication and writing is fucking super old. Mm -hmm. You you look at the you first of all one of them's way better. But look at the reason why writing was invented. Writing was invented because you didn't have what, what, the, what was your alternative? Right, but I don't think it's way better. Well, because I, I, I think writing is, has its place definitely. too for some things. It's not. Yeah, I don't think I agree with you. I don't think it's a question of better or worse. But look what television did to newspapers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or the web did to newspapers. Right. So I, it, it's one. It's not. Better or worse, or maybe it's the comic book discussion all over again. Something will win out. It will happen. It, it, is TV better for people than newspapers? It doesn't really matter anymore. It's a moot point because people chose TV. Right, but that's just because it's passive. You just sit there. That's right. And it just comes to you. When given the choice between video, here's something that Google's testing is instead of giving you text based search results on a Google search, they give you video results. They give you you can you Google something and there's a video option for Google to serve up. They'll grab it. That's a lot of my traffic it comes from Google searches, not YouTube searches. So Google knows that their objective is to answer your question in the way that you want to have it answered. If that makes sense, right? The bet the most suitable format for you to ingest, and oftentimes that means video because retention times are better on video. People. I don't want to say are lazy. People just like sophisticated delivery models. Like documentaries, for me, are an amazing way to learn. Well, it's also you can't hide when if someone writes something in print, but they're full of shit. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard to see that. They're it's hard exposing to less about themselves. How much would you like if you ever read like you ever read a really crazy Tumblr site? Right, and you're like, oh my god, I would so much rather hear you say this. Yeah, you know, like oh, like some crazy radical <laughs> feminist ranting, anti male but ranting. But here's the thing about that too: is when you write something, it's not it's nothing like plastering your face on something. Right. I think these people wouldn't say half the shit they said if it was their face in front of everyone. Most likely, yeah. And so if you would expo the craziness would come out of it, you would see it. You go, oh, like, oh, yeah. you're a fucking banana yeah. head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. I need. I can stop watching this now. Now yeah. I know what I'm dealing with. Or I can watch this with m a more level perspective. So that's why I know I'm saying you're nuts. That's why I'm saying video is the ultimate. The ultimate in terms of bits and bytes. Yeah. Think about the information I write down on a bunch of shit on this notepad. If I were to put that into bits and bytes, take a photograph or type it out, that's nothing. Like an SMS message in terms of size is not. There's not very much data there. Yeah, it's true. I, if I want, that's what held the web back. That's why newspapers exist. That's why we had to send each other letters. We didn't have the bandwidth. Ah. Now that we have the bandwidth, we can transport ourselves the closest thing we can get to it across the other way. And so we have to stand up for the shit that we actually believe in. We have to be authentic. We have to – all these other things immediately fall into line because it's so much harder to fake when you have access to all that extra data. Well, then how come uh, like a sort of 15-second thing on, on Twitter – hasn't taken off like a 140 character thing like what, a 15 second video? video thing oh like fine and like shit like a yeah like those you know i mean well, they're kind of like, silly yeah instagram's pretty big though yeah right but i mean how many people express themselves on it they have videos where they do things like they'll skateboard yeah. jump woo or they'll fucking ride a motorcycle woo 
you know, they'll have that. But how many of them are of people staring at the camera and saying something for 140, char- for 140 characters, you know? There's a huge community. I mean, Instagram is humongous. I, no, but the, Instagram is mostly pictures. Yeah. Mostly pictures with context underneath it. How many, why, why, if we're talking about the purest expression, the closest thing you can get to an actual person being like an actual this. video. I like this. Why isn't that taking off? Why isn't it a pure video communication? YouTube. Fine. Yeah, but fifteen seconds. Why does why do you why do you want it to be fifteen Instagram seconds? Because 15. yeah, that's what I know. It, that's why six. Uh, but because, no, no, I, I know that. But because I'm, of like one of the things that made Twitter stand out oh, was the fact that it's one hundred forty forces characters. concision. I see yes. what you're saying. Yeah. So can we force concision with video? Is that possible? Well, we're talking about ultimate expression, right? The ultimate experience uh, of somebody and who they are and what they are. What you do over here, th- three hours you can't. If, if we're agreeing that it's all about faking it or not faking it, mm-hmm. it's only going to get astronomically harder the longer you have to hold it up. Right. I agree with that. But what I'm saying is uh, take out that. I, I definitely agree that to get across a more elaborate point of view right. or discuss something in depth, you would l- want a YouTube video. Yeah. That's the benefit of yeah. YouTube. But, like, what about something where. I guess a lot of Twitter is the sharing of links, but take away the sharing of links. I went to see the new Captain America movie today. Oh my God, did it suck a fat dick? Boom. Done. That's it. Vine. But do they use it for that? Yeah. People use it for that. Most of Vine is like comedy stuff, the vast majority. People joking around? Little tiny seven second skits. Right. Like some of the popular ones that I've recognized is this thing where people really like Jordan shoes. I don't know, you probably maybe saw this passed around where if a guy's really into sneakers, if he gets a, a little mark on his Jordans, he freaks out. You know, that kind of paradigm, that, right, or that kind right. of whatever whatever that is. So that's like a thing. But on Vine, there's there's some channels that are dedicated to that, like what I would do. You know, I don't know. Really? But funny, in a funny way, whatever, a skit. I'm doing a terrible <laughs> job of I'm, describing I it. I use Vine all the time. Like I was pretty much reviewing Spider-Man 3 when I was watching it using Vine and Instagram yeah. and stuff like that. While you were watching it. So you watched yeah. it I, I really, I think, yeah. I think there's an issue right now of expectations. And I think that when a person logs on to Twitter, they have obvious expectations of what there's, what's going to be there, the context of it. And I think that for right now, YouTube is synonymous with video. You right. know? And it's going to be difficult for any player at any length to come in there and change that. I started taking pictures, tweets of drawings, of uh, uh, writings, rather, that I made. I just said I was going to do it for the rest of my tweets from now on. It's just even a picture of shit that I wrote down <laughs> so people could see my handwriting, but I only did it once. Yeah. Well, I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> well, it takes well, the way prob- longer to write things. Well, not only that, but the problem is there that a lot of what makes the web so good in finding shit you care about is the fact that text is searchable. Yeah. You take a picture... Right. All that data is gone. That's true. But what I was going to say is how infuriating would it be to people if you made a YouTube video of a bunch of shit you wrote? Oh. Like page after page Actually, that was of things th- you wrote? That was a thing. Was? Is. Really? The people, super depressed people, hold, oh. hold up a thing and it says- Oh, I see. Because they don't have a voice and then yeah. they throw the page. And it's oh, nice. wow. Leftovers. Yeah. Did you ever see that one where a woman left a job- and she wrote this uh, the pa- page after page, like a Tumblr thing of all these cards, like shitting on her boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then so the boss that. wrote back and did the, the exact same, same form. thing. Yeah, I same saw that. Form and she was dancing around and shit too. Annihilated her. Yeah, yeah. yeah she well, she was wearing like sexy outfits yeah. and stuff like that. And he was yeah. talking about how fucking stupid she was and mm-hmm. incompetent and a bad employee and selfish. But and, see, that's interesting. When see people take old tech and introduce it into a new format. The reason that they're doing it is because they're they're trying to imply. I don't know if they're they try and make it more serious than it is, but ultimately, I think it's because that person is not the best at expressing themselves in the real form. Well, that's weird because the original version of that was Bob Dylan. Bob yeah. Dylan with that song. What was that song that he did? That there was a music video, an old Bob Dylan yeah, music I've seen video it. where the and then I've in excess it. did it. I've seen it. Do you think Bob Dylan was great at expressing himself? Oh, yeah. You don't think he was great no, at expressing himself? No, no, see, but I appreciate abstract 
uh, representation, mm-hmm. but it's it's not the same as sitting in a room with somebody. Right. We never sat in a room with Bob Dylan. That's true. That's a good point. But that was his art form was expressing himself through music and he did and a great he did a great job there. Yeah. You know, and if you look at look at the lyrics and whatnot, incredibly sophisticated and deep and meaningful and all the rest of it. But I think I I don't know. I'm drawing a separation myself. I think art has always been a way for those for people to communicate in a format that's more comfortable for them. Hmm. You're going to go you're going to go to their party, they're not going to come to yours. Right. Talking is something we all have to do. Right. You know, it's it's interesting as well as if you went back to Bob Dylan's heyday, you went to the 60s and the 70s and said, uh, okay, we're going to make short films where you just talk about shit and then yeah. people could take it and yeah. watch it and be like, seems, what? It seems brutal, right? It seems <laughs> terrible. <laughs> It seems yeah, like why I'd would rather we, just do a song. It's like why would we want our why would we want our Bob Dylan in that form? But it's the same for celebrities nowadays. It's like once upon a time a celebrity was like phew, vapor. Like what are they doing in their spare time? Now it's Charlie Sheen they, arguing with his ex wife on they, Twitter. Yeah, exactly. Do they eat Cheerios? Like what? Like are they real? You know. Right. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But now it's this exposure in so many ways has forced them to be real people uh, for us and we can shit all over them. Yeah. You know? Well, the shitting all over them also, we have the access to shit all That's over right. them. That's right. That's right. And and again, it's much like the traditional brand thing coming into YouTube. It's like the traditional people have to come to our party now. You see, they just got a profile like anyone else. Well, sort of. And then there's people that exploit that opening. Like, if you have like an article, a TMZ article about Kim and Kanye, oh. that is essentially a portal for hate. That's all God. that is. What that exists is you open up the comments and then just let the floodgates of hell just open up on the photo of Kim and Kanye kissing in front of some fucking fountain somewhere. That Every, is so it's fucked portal. up to me that people give a shit about that. Give a shit? What, I, it's probably second only to porn. Wow. If you thought about like the amount of internet space that's used to just <laughs> shit on random targets of hate, uh, whether it's like some ridiculous celebrities, like it used to be Paris Hilton, and that bitch just evaporated. Don't people she vanished? Don't, don't people realize that piggybacking on that is so fucking low? Who the people that are commenting, or the people that are all making of it. it? All of it. Well, the people that are making it was TMZ or any of these. They're making a lot of money. And it's it's a. Have you ever seen? There's a uh, Morgan Spurlock has that show Inside Man. You ever see that show? No, I've seen his documentaries though. Good show. Um, it's on CNN, and he he does a bunch of different jobs, like and just will go inside and see what it's like to be in different people's lives. And one of them he did was he hung out with a bunch of paparazzi. And the way they see it, it's like, look, this is a gig, you know? Sure. You, you wanted to be famous, sure. this well, comes with the gig. You know what? Let's leave them out. Let's go boil it down all the way to the consumption. Okay. Because that's what drives everything else. Right. That's That's the fuel. Right. Why is, why is that something that human beings want to consume? Because it's fascinating. Why is that fascinating? Because we're stupid as fuck. <laughs> we're why like, we're why does it matter if... <laughs> Why does it matter what Kim Kardashian and Kanye West are doing? Well, this has actually been studied by sociologists. And, and they, their conclusion is that gossip was a way of keeping monitoring behavior and the mm. sort of reactions to our own behavior and how people perceived us in the community. And it's sort of to elevate themselves by trial and error, what we talked about earlier, learning from your mistakes. Well, those mistakes sometimes are socially being ostracized because your acts or your words or, you know, those things existed in communities to kind of keep people in check. Right. Well, now we live in communities where I've been in the same house for 10 years. I barely know my fucking neighbors, mm-hmm. dude. I mean, barely. I, I wait. I, there's a few people in my neighborhood that I'm pretty friendly with that I've seen over the times that we've had conversations, but we don't hang out. No one, no one's knocking on my door and coming over for dinner. This, you know, this we have these weird environments that we live in now, yeah. and we have this desire to find out what everyone else is up to. And the only real way to do that is through gossip. And when there's no gossip, you just you go to the gossip of the kings and queens. And who's the kings and queens? Movie stars, rock yeah. stars, those people that you see Super in movies. Super low, low and, form of communication, though. It, well, but so compelling. So I, then it becomes, well, if it's so low, why do so many people engage in it? What is the draw? What is the? There's some sort of 
base human attraction to That's finding definitely. out what Tiger Woods texted to all those freaky bitches on his uh, his hit list. Yeah, you know, there's some strange thing to finding out. I guess about, it, I guess it makes people feel better about themselves. Gets them excited. Yeah, They're finding out some dirt. Right, but at the same time, they can point and say, you're the fucked up one, so my life's more normal, or my life's better. Well, it takes the focus on their you know? fucked up Like, remember when Britney Spears was, like, imploding or oh, whatever yeah. it was? Oh, yeah, shaved her head and went nutty. And, and, and it was a, an opportunity for people to point and say, look how fucking crazy she is. The photos of her with a fucking umbrella, wielding it at photographers. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, it definitely makes you, especially when it's that bad. When yeah. it's, do you remember David Hasselhoff? His daughter released a video mm. of him unbelievably drunk, like scrounging yes, around I do for recall. a hamburger. I recall it, that. It was so insane. Yeah. You see this poor fucking see, guy in the feel, throes of sickness. I see shit like scrambling up food like that. I see, see shit like that as traps. Like if I'm on the web, that's like a bear trap to me. <laughs> you know? I get stuck in it. You know, that, that bait, uh, link bait and shit. Uh, yeah. You know, if, if, see, the web is consumed in these tidbits and. All you need to do is grip a, pe- a person on the lowest common denominator, and you win. And it's like if the consumers themselves don't man the fuck up and see a trap when it's there and not click on it, you know. I mean, obviously, it's it's obviously a discussion that you're not you can't get to the bottom of. But it's like you are essentially supporting the kind of shit you don't really like. I was reading this thing on uh, pornography recently or watching this thing. It's a TED Talk on pornography. Somebody sent it to me on Twitter and they said this guy's the biggest white knight ever. And I expected it to be just like a Tumblr website where some dude was like arguing about being a male feminist or something. Something along those lines. But it was a guy who actually made these like pretty intense detailed points about what's the the real issue with watching pornography. Mm. And it was pretty fascinating because it was really in depth. Hmm. And he was talking about a lot of shit that's, you know, pretty undeniable and, hmm. and, and uniquely undeniable. Like one of the things he was talking about is that the that a lot of sex in um, porn is nothing like sex in real life in that there's no hands. And what he meant was... There's no caressing and massaging, rubbing hmm. and holding Good and point. all the thing that people do when they make love. They they make love. Notice how I say that? Very sensitive. Instead, it's like <laughs> the people are doing things at odd angles. He was a little white knighty for sure. sure. But there's a, it's undeniable that when you take no, – don't just have this idea in your head that there might be something wrong with watching porn, but have it so much so that you've concocted a TED Talk and you know, sure. you've presented yourself sure. as this moral alternative, this moral and ethical alternative to all the other men out there. This, this is certainly like a progressive brownie point. Sort of a pull of that initiative. The something regarding the pornography thing, though, that I think is interesting and maybe a reason why, from a discussion standpoint, there's something there, is because at once upon a time, the consumption of porn, I don't know, when I was a kid, I guess, I don't know, because I sort of missed it, you had to physically go and get a t- videotape or oh, buy yeah. a magazine. Well, I'll tell you, son, because I was around <laughs> back then. <laughs> When I was young, they had video stores, and this was before Blockbuster even took off. Right. There was mom and pop video stores, and you would go to these local video stores, and you know, and I used to have you, them. They'd watch you walk into the back. Sometimes you have memberships to these video stores, <laughs> remember those? And you had a card, and they would punch your card, and every 10th video you got a fucking discount or a free video. Um, there was a, like, you would push beads aside, or like saloon doors, and you would go into this area, and it was all dicks and fucking asses and and mostly not like really hardcore shit like you're seeing today right like they would actually like the covers of these these videos would sort of be concocted knowing that they were going to be placed on a shelf somewhere yeah that someone could kind of just get to as opposed to typing in you know suckmycock.com or whatever the hell it is and you're going to go right there so you know what to expect american Pornography consumption pre-internet, post-internet. Well, I think it's what? a lot like our gossip consumption. Is uh, we have access to it, we're going to consume more of it. But the amplification level on porn, I think, is like nothing else. I think it's like both of them. I think Ooh. both of them have massive amplification levels because but of the could, access. Let's put it this way. But you could always go to a grocery store and walk out the door with a gossip magazine. Right. Super easy access. Eat the saloon door thing. Yeah. I mean, there's like what two in every town. I mean, it's was it was 
in a corner somewhere. That's true, but a, but a magazine is very finite. You know, maybe there's two or three of them on the shelf. Yeah, you're that's done true. When you you're get done. from front to back, and yeah. you have to stop consuming it. Yeah, there's not a lot of stuff you're right, there. You're as right. Far there as are content. there are parallels there. I mean, I think probably the pornography one. For, uh, I think both of them are based on human instincts. They're both kind of fucking similar. Yeah, they're both based on. Oh, some how weird... about this? Gossip is porn for girls, for women. Huh. But it's not. I. Yeah, I don't think it is porn for them. I don't know. Well, there's obviously I, still porn for women. But, you but know I'll tell you, you one thing you can be sure of. There's a man who's really into gossip. <laughs> that guy's a bitch. <laughs> That's a fact. If there's a man out there who's really into, like, this girl's shoes or that girl's dress and look at her stupid car, like... I think there's I think there's gossip. I think guys and girls like gossip for the same reason that, like, if you go to a movie and you're, you like Brad Pitt movies... You also want to know what Brad Pitt's doing in real life. Like, is he f- getting doing drugs and? But that's only if drinking. you like someone who's a movie star. When you talk about Kim and Kim Kardashian and her family, they don't they don't do anything. Well, like, Kanye they, all is they one do, of the biggest rappers, for rappers ever. Oh, yeah, that, he's a recent addition to that fucking circus. Right. I'm going to use he's this opportunity a, to go before pee. that. Yeah, please do. Before that, th- th- there was nothing. I mean, if you stop and think about it, she contributed nothing. All, right. All she was doing was being a point of gossip. So in that sense, she's a way bigger gossip star than any Angelina Jolie story. You know, the, if you looked at the number of people that are paying attention to Kim Kardashian versus paying attention to Angelina Jolie, I'd be, I'd be willing to bet it like five or six to one in Kim's favor. So I think it's more of, ooh, look at her. And if you can do things to keep eyes on you. You, that's your business, whether it's hate or love. Your business is to keep that that sort of weird, gossipy energy up. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I go to it every day to watch. Cause it's what do you me- go to watch? T- TMZ and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I'll, I, I love that shit because it's just like, oh, my God, look what happened here. Look what happened there. You know, And it's just because you watch them on TV and you watch them in movies and like make believe world. And so it's weird seeing them outside of Make Believer with, oh, shit, Tom Cruise has got AIDS, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's... You can't say that. Allegedly. <laughs> but That's not even true. The Scientologist true. cured him of it. Yeah. He wore that big gold medal around his neck. <laughs> And By the way, do you follow boom. Yoko Ono on Twitter? Uh, of course I don't. <laughs> Should I? Yeah, of course. Write down a sad memory, put it in a box, burn the box, and sprinkle the ashes in a field. Give some ashes to a friend who shared the sadness. Oh, my God. Yeah, your friend who had a sad memory. Here's some ashes. Like, what, that's rude. Meemaw says 4.7 <laughs> million fucking Twitter followers? Yeah. That's hilarious. That shows you how Twitter is crazy. Yoko Ono has more than 4 million Twitter followers because she used to fuck one of the best musicians ever. Imagine, That's hilarious. <laughs> look at this one. Uh, imagine what would happen to your room when you move away. Imagine if there is anything in the room that you could take with you when you die. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Just shut the fuck How up. How many retweets? How many retweets? Uh, uh, Call your answer phone every day and complain and moan about your life and people around you. Listen to the tape at the end of the year. What? Wow. She doesn't even know how to say voicemail. Call your answer phone. That's not an answer phone, dummy. It's goddamn voicemail. Answer what phone. planet are you living on? You can't agree <laughs> to the same descriptives. Could that be a translation thing, maybe? What? She speaks English. Well... Sort of. The fuck? She speaks... She's been around... She's been speaking English longer than I've been alive. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, but people right? never really fully grab it if they didn't, you know? I don't understand how people could be in this country for so long and communicate with people. Like, I have people in my life that I know yeah. um, that work in certain places that I visit that speak Spanish mostly. Yeah. And I've been communicating with them for years. Mm. And they still don't know how to talk English. Mm-hmm. I've met them for... Like, how hard is it, man? Is it that <laughs> fucking hard? My daughter's four, <laughs> and I can talk to her. I've known you for 15 fucking years. I've been coming to this place, and I still can't understand but you. But that, ex- that exposes this thing uh, we were talking about earlier, but how when you're young, you have a cap- capabilities to learn that will never be replicated again. That's not true either, because I know people that have picked up languages late into their 50s, and they're fucking awesome at it. it well, you know, I know people there's that There's always the- going to be outliers, so there's going to be special people, but the average immigrant is, is never going to sound like a fluent 
person who grew up here. Yeah, but that's mostly because they keep themselves in communities that are other immigrants and they that speak helps. their native language. Yeah, and that they helps don't, it. They don't attempt to do it. But if you th- in- immerse yourself in whatever culture, Spanish culture, and want to learn how to speak Spanish, right. I know people that have learned in their adulthood, learn how to speak Spanish. They speak perfect Spanish. Right. They just chose to do it. It's not impossible to do. It's like, it's all just a matter of focus. If you can get good at swimming into your very, 30s. Very few you'll see very few Western people learn how to speak Asian languages. Right, but I think that is more of a time and interest thing than it really? is of an ability. Yeah. Uh, I sense a challenge here. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I have no time and I have no interest. See, I just sort of proved my point. <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't know. I, I think a lot of people like to walk around too and say, hey, I learned another language and who's testing it? I'm not testing their theory. I'll go, okay, fine. You can you can tell somebody you're hungry in another language. Good, great. Right. Who's Who's really patrolling that? Well, there's a com- Canadian comedian. I don't know his name, but uh, he learned Chinese, m- learned Mandarin, I oh, think it was, wow. and, and went to China and started doing stand-up in Chinese. And there was a video that they put online. It was fascinating because he, a white guy. Yeah, a white guy. I, the accent was amazing. Obviously, I don't know whether or not he's saying Doesn't, the yeah. right. But the one Tong Chong Tao, he was talking <laughs> right. like he was from China. Yeah, I'm sure. Know? I mean, if you're gonna put. Somebody in into a test to figure out if they're actually fluent in the language. Put him on a stage in front of a bunch of people and see if he can make them laugh. You know, like if if the guy was able to put that together, I'd say he's probably pretty fluent. Well, I think there's also like a situation where he just recognized that there was a big market that wasn't right. being tapped into. It. Right. Like here's millions of people. They have this new freedom now. Billions. Yeah, billion. How many billions are in China? It's one, <laughs> at least one. Right. <laughs> at least one. Yeah. So all these people that. They don't have access to stand up comedy, you know, in their language. Really? There's no such thing as Chinese stand up comedy? I wouldn't say there's no such thing, but it's certainly not nearly as popular as wow. English speaking comedy is in Canada. So right. there's a lot of goddamn Canadian comedians. Sure. Like if you wanted to learn stand up comedy and you wanted to perform it in Canada, there's many, 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 many venues, many mm-hmm. places to do it. Of course. But there's also many comedians. Whereas if you wanted to learn Chinese and just tap, I mean, maybe his motivation to learn Chinese was totally unrelated to his doing stand-up in China. Right. I mean, he might be just a person like, my friend John was like super into, into languages. He spoke like five different languages. He just loved learning languages and he would practice them with people that, you know, spoke it. It could be that. But also it's like the amount of competition that you have over there is probably none. Yeah, that's you know? a huge advantage. Fuck yeah. Well, there's a huge advantage to being white over there in general. I know a couple buddies went over there to teach English in Korea, and it's like, you're a stud, you know? Whoa. Because you're the, you're the guy, you know what I mean? You're the guy that they see on TV, you know? You're, you, you, you're Tom Cruise for a minute. Really? Yeah, because they're really homogenous societies. Like, you walk around Japan, you're not seeing this mixed, this mix-up of ethnicity that you have in North America. We have, mm. we have a... It's a very strange cultural experience compared to the rest of the world. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense in the fact that there's so much content, again, that gets distributed by Americans. But that's also why it's really crazy in Korea where they, the amount of people getting surgery to change their appearance mm. to a Western appearance. That's crazy. Woo! Boy, we've gotten into it a few times on the podcast. We won't get into it again because yeah. we shared a bunch of links and a bunch of uh, images. But it's apparently as popular as, like, braces. You right. know, like, that people get, like, some serious plastic in, in, surgery. In India, they try to get lighter the yeah. skin as well. You know what they use in a lot of those um, those places? They use some sort of a, an injection that uh, yeah, I heard about it. chemical. Hold on a second. I've said it before, and I know what it is. Philippines, they do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lighter skin. I forget what it's called. It's actually also an amino acid or something like that. Yeah, but it's it's harmful, right? Um, it's it's actually a good thing for you. It's like healthy. Um, if you take it like as a, a dietary supplement, what the fuck is it called? Glutathione. Glutathione. Ah, right. Which is uh, glutathione is. What is it um, originally used for? I forget what it's originally used for. But it's also been shown to aid in the body's um, absorption of alcohol. Hmm. So uh, Dr. Mark Gordon, who had been uh, on my podcast before, told me that it would greatly decrease the effect that alcohol is on your body. That glutathione hmm. ha- helps in some way to uh, digest alcohol. It's an antioxidant in plants, animals, fungi, and some bacteria uh, preventing damage to important cellular components caused by 
reactive oxygen species such as free radicals and peroxides. So um, somehow or another, they inject this stuff into their body, and it makes you thi- uh, it makes you turn more pale in some some strange way. That's the stuff Michael Jackson was on. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck they do, and they actually have pills too. I don't know. Skin whitening at home. Hmm. <laughs> There's a video. There's a video how to whiten your skin. After eight weeks, I managed to get my skin a few turns whiter. And also got rid of my freckles. Whoa, what else are you doing? What are you doing to your eyes? What are you it's doing to your fucking peeling. brain? What's going on there? I don't know, man. Like, that's a that's a really far end of the spectrum kind of scenario yeah. in which you can, you can immediately see the Western influence on the rest of the world in a physical way. Well, how about people that tan, though? What, <laughs> what about people that get nutty and they, they don't feel comfortable unless they're super, super tan? It, that's a... Is that how many people are into that? A lot. Yeah. Like remember tanning, that tanning tan salon? lady? I love tanning. Remember that tan lady that was on TV? She was like su- in, insanely dark. Yeah. She so even it's took just... her daughter tanning and burned her daughter. Yeah, but do is there such a thing as white people trying to look like some other race? There's such a thing as white people trying to look darker for sure. Well, darker, but you know what I mean? Like eye surgeries or ah fuck. I guess everyone. Well, a Brazilian guy just got an operation recently to look Korean. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, it was a big news piece. Wow. Got, got some uh, plastic there's surgery. There's enough people on in, on the planet, I guess. Everyone's, For sure. Everyone's tried something. Not only they tried it, there's probably a forum about it. Yeah. There's a Reddit sub forum. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's nasty. Yeah, you're getting, Look, people are... And also, it's like what we were talking about before. There's a lot of people that are just not... Un, they're not comfortable with who they are. Yeah. So they think that maybe if I look Korean, I'd feel better. <laughs> maybe That's if I was key. a few shades whiter, I'd feel better. Right. I maybe think, I was but I, tan. I, I think it gets particularly strange or interesting when it's a huge group of people that are doing it. You right. know what I mean? When like you have Koreans. a when you have a trend is mm-hmm. when it sort of changes. Yeah, and that's also what we're talking about. It's like the, where's the content coming from? Most of it's from the West. Yeah. So that this these these features, this Brad Pitt face that yeah, you're yeah, seeing yeah. on your big screen over and over again yeah. is sort of making you want, why are my eyes so small? <laughs> But you that's know, they, crazy, the physical manifestation of influence. Mm-hmm. The physical manifestation. Wow. But isn't it all the physical manifestation of influence when it comes to, like, cultural ideas? Yeah. Of what's Tra- what, what do you choose to wear? What are your clothes? How about you, you, you put a plate in your lip? Who, how'd that get started? How, you got a bone through your nose? Who else, the fuck else has a bone through their nose? Is that your thing? You're the only guy? No, it's a tradition. <laughs> well, who the fuck? We look great. We have bones in our nose. You do not look great. Come here. <laughs> yeah, so ultimately we all do things because of other people and what they're doing. Well, there was a thing on um, this television show uh, where this guy was going to this uh, uh, guy was going to Africa, and um, he was visiting with these people that are regularly um, being around crocodiles, and they have these markings that they they scar their skin in mm. the the form of a crocodile, like crocodile ridges, and they have them across their bodies. Really crazy. Shit, and they they sort of mimic the skin of a crocodile. Whoa! Yeah. What's the what? It's just about a coming of age thing with uh, the men. And they, right. they they do this, and it sort of represents strength, and they cover themselves with this, these crocodile scars. Wow! It was so weird to look at these keloid scars all around this guy's body, and this right. had somehow or another become a part of their culture, like war paint or weird you know facial paint, or how about? What we no- think of as normal, when a woman wears ridiculous lipstick and b- blue-colored eyeliner and, you know, l- lashes. I got to say, I'm happy as hell that that's not us. Like that our, we don't have to do sex. it? Our sex. Yeah. That would if be you've ever lot. watched it going down. <laughs> <laughs> the way you say it, you're like a fucking assault. <laughs> like a woman's getting beat up by her makeup. You ever <laughs> watch it going down, bro? It's hard to watch. <laughs> It is. You can't just get out of bed and get to your shit. Mm. You can't just move on with your life. Like, I put no thought. I mean, not no. I mean, I got to look in the mirror and make sure I'm not fucked up or for some reason, you know. But the idea that there's preparation just to leave the house. Mm Mm-hmm. Facial preparation. Yeah. And some women, if they don't have their makeup on and another girl is around and she has her makeup on, they get, like, upset. God, oh, I should have put my fucking makeup yeah, on. Yeah, 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 God, yeah. I didn't put my makeup on. You should have told me. Bitch has her makeup on. Look yeah. at her lips. They're crazy yeah. colors like from space. Look at her <laughs> eyes. She closes her eyes. You she's, see the heavens. She's winning. The heavens in her eyelids. Yeah, I hate God makeup. damn it. Her skin is perfect. It's covered in fucking powder. How it's dare she? Skin colored powder all over your yeah, face. Yeah, we lucked out, man. We Look lucked at her nails. We lucked out in all kinds of 
areas. Mm-hmm. Except How war. How about urinating? Except, How about urinating? That's awesome. Except we die in war more often. Right, right. We uh, we have jobs that are far more dangerous. Right. We're more likely to be right. murdered. Right, right. There's right, a lot right. of shit that's not so hot about. No, being a dude. you know what? You know what else? You have to, that you have to be <laughs> tough to a degree. Like Do you think so? Well, let's let's put it this way. Let let's say uh, growing up. You know, there's going to be circumstances in which you you could be physically threatened, and that's socially acceptable. For a woman, it's really never. I mean, unless you're being threatened by another woman, or or unless it's like an actual crime. Right. But if two boys who are ten years old decide to duke it out, it's not a crime. You know, I think that's a lot of it. Is there's a real problem with people and and violent interactions. That could a lot of the problems could be resolved with the introduction of martial arts early in people's lives. Right. Like the amount of actual violence that you see, like uh, other than sparring in an actual martial arts environment, is almost non-existent. It's very, very rare. Yeah. In a rare gym, we see people arguing or fighting. Most of the time, it's just you're you're, you're getting it all out. You're getting yeah. it all out of your system. I agree with that, but I I think what what maybe what I should have said was. This idea that a man needs to stick up for himself. Yeah. Like all, all this, the, the, the Chicago stuff I was talking about earlier, they had like 50 murders last month or something mm-hmm. crazy, and I am guarantee they're all men shooting men. Yeah, but that's a poverty, crime, gang, sure. drug war. But it has both sexes on. exist there. Yeah, that's true. Well, there's actually a lot of girls that are involved in gang crime as well I'm in sure. Chicago. I'm sure. But there's I... a big article recently about this one girl who died, and she was like 19 years old, and she had all these photos of her online with guns, holding up guns and shit, I'm making gang I'm sure that's there too, but I think the tough guy thing. Thing is a mm-hmm. thing. It's definitely a thing. It is. It's a jungle out there. We're out of time, dude. <laughs> we fucking killed it. Yeah. Hey, thanks again. Lots of fun. Thank you. Both things we did today were really fun. Fantastic. I it can't wait to see it. It was fun to smash it. shit, and it was fun to uh, to do podcasts with you. Again, we got to do this more often. We Big time. never run out of shit to talk about. No, never. Thanks to Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com and use the code word Joe for a 10% off your first purchase and for a free trial. That's squarespace.com. The code word is Joe. Thanks also to our new sponsor, Untuck It. Untuckit.com. U N T U C K I T.com. Go there, use the promo code ROGAN and get 10% off. Shipping is free both ways. Thanks also to onit.com. O N N I T. Use the code word ROGAN and save 10% off any and all supplements. Much love, you dirty bitches, and we'll see you tomorrow. Mwah. Oh, you were? It's from the Snoop Dogg. Oh, shit. (laughs) Don't do that.